He's been intercepted five times this year. as a six-footer and 205 pounds. Brinson and Bell will be back as the Huskers will receive. Iowa State has taken the wind. The wind, remember, now is blowing into the face of the guys you're looking at. And there's the kicker. And Joe, Coach Walden has done some screwy things to start ball games. I call him screwy, maybe not screwy. He's taking a lot of chances. You can't tell whether he's not going to set this ball up and onside the first thing he does. But I guarantee you, sometime during the ball game, we will see some wacky calls from Walden. You folks in the Castle Bluffs area, looking at a fellow you've seen him many times, Jeff Shudak, who has not missed an extra point try in his whole career at Iowa State so far. Good kicker. We were watching him earlier. He was booting them home from 60 yards in field goal practice. They're going to have to hold it on the team. So Shudak will kick off with Brinson and Bell Deep. We're ready to play football at Jack Trice Field. They're going to carry down. That's Brinson. Goal line. The 10. He's at the 25 to the 30 on his feet. About the 37-yard line is Dana Brinson. There's some help from his teammates. Finally knocked down by Johnson. Here it is again. Here it is again, John. This would really set up the Nebraska offense with what they needed. They needed to get out long enough that they didn't have to worry about their own end zone and they can run their plays. And now Tom Osgond can do about what he wants to, Joe. First and 10 Huskers at about the 37-yard line. That's Ken Clark in the eye back spot. Carpenter in front of him off the right side. About the 42-yard line, a gain of around five. Clark stopped by Don Edwards out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 6'3", 230. Iowa State defensively is not the biggest line they've looked at. Edwards is 230. Patton, their senior, right next to him at 240. On the ends, Mark Foley at 226, and Byrne is 260. We've got it. Milligan at tight end. Morgan Gregory, wide receiver the other way. We had a penalty here too, Joe. Uh, Iowa State was offside, so Nebraska chose to take the penalty and still keep it first down. Got Sledge and Keeler along with Nelson, Glazer, and Young up front. There's your offensive line, fellas who we're talking about. Steve Taylor at quarterback. Goes back, gives it to Clark, comes left. Runs out of a tackle up to the 43-yard line. Huskers are going to need to get across the 46 to pick up the first down. Robert Lindino, the outside linebacker out of Fountain Valley, California, who is an all-conference player. He's number 47, a junior college transfer. Look at the Cyclone defensive line. Left end is Foley. Tackle is Patton, Edwards, and Byrne to complete their front four. Sinefro, Shane, and Hoskins. And Shane, the leading tackler. Carruthers, Robertson, Dole, Baker in the deep secondary for the Cyclones. Second down, three to go after the penalty for the Huskers. Hand off to Clark. Got the first down. Midfield and one yard into Cyclone territory before Anthony Hoskins. Joe, I don't believe you're going to see Nebraska do anything else as long as, of course, they're going into that win, except do this if they can do it. They're just going to pitch the ball right, pitch the ball left, and the offensive line is doing a good job early. We don't have any big gains yet, but they're kind of feeling everybody out, but you see some very good blocks there by Sledge and by the tight end. It's Hoskins, the outside linebacker, who made the stop. First and 10 Huskers, 49-yard line of the Cyclones. That's Carpenter, who broke the game open last week with a quick opener, and he's over the 45 to about the 43 before Mike Shane brings it down. Boy, this Shane is a big player. Uh, as far as the bulwark of a Cyclone defense, he has 108 tackles to date. He's averaged 15 per game. Here it is again. And you can see a little pull there by the offensive line. Nelson coming in and taking off the linebacker. He does get to the plate, but not before Nebraska picks up five yards, Joe. Second down. About four for the first down. Clark again fumble. Got it. Kenny Dove on it and picked it up at about the 44-yard line. It's going to leave him five yards short of the first down. First third down situation for the Huskers. And you don't want to see that today. You don't want to see that dropism as we had last week. Tom Osborne said he thought it was catching, and that's the first time really that we've had anything that wasn't a straight handoff. A little pitch out there, and he couldn't quite hold on to it. Coming in is Nate Turner, number 22, bringing the play in. We've got two tight ends. Monty Katzenstein, number 85. That's Turner sitting top of your screen. Milliken is the other tight end. 
Third, and they'll call it six on the scoreboard to see. Clark runs into, look like his own man and an Iowa State defender. And the Huskers now at the 42-yard line. Mike Chain was at the bottom of the stack for the Cyclones. Had their first big decision. Did they punt into the wind? We played two and a half minutes. Uh, they're going to punt it, Joe. I don't think there's any doubt about it. But great penetration there by the defensive line. As you say, the replay here, they really get in deep on the first man, and he has to go around him and then runs right into Shane. A great tackle there. He really put him down with a lot of force. And they've got the first big break. John Croker back on his own 42-yard line. There's a lot of time. Line drives it. They signal fair catch at the 18. That's Robertson. Make it Charlie Vondra who makes the catch. Fair catch, and Iowa State will have its first possession. There's the coach, Dr. Tom, on the sidelines. This guy is always worried, Joe. <laughs> Atlas on a day like today. You know, I did a little talking to him about that uh, on the sideline of the Tom Osborne show last week, about his involvement, his cheering, his, uh, you know, going up. And he's working all the time, Joe. He's got that headset on. He's not like a lot of head coaches who don't work with a headset on. He's working constantly during the ballgame, so he's involved. It's Mike Bush going in motion right side to the left side as the Cyclone offense was kept around Jim Walden until the last minute. Coming up the center is Joe Henderson. Short yardage before Brad Thomas brings him down. Couple of yards. Anderson number 33 and Kurt Warren number 40, the running backs. That was Warren out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. They're both seniors. And Joe, Iowa State has done what they wanted to on the first drive. What they want to do as this ball game goes along is shorten the ball game. Every time they can get a possession without Nebraska scoring, they've shortened the ball game and have, they have a better chance to win it. So they were successful on their first defensive stand. Double flanker right, one to the left. In motion is Glotzelde, number 81. Oberg back to throw. Gets chased, gets caught, gets dropped. And Joe, that will shorten quarterback. So that type of rush, they keep hammering him like that. And he'll be about five foot six before this ball game is over. A great rush by Nebraska. You Number 91. On Kent Wells was the first guy in. Watch him. Here's 91 coming in. Right down he goes. Wells just goes over the top and sort of slides by. Oberg is 6'2", 190 pounder. who's thrown six TD passes this year. Threw three of them against Missouri. Again, one back behind Oberg as he's got flankers both ways. Huskers in the four-man set. Oberg may be checking off. He didn't get it off, Joe. He was, I think he checked off twice there. He went to one play. Nebraska checked out of their defense, moved into another one, and he tried to check off to another play, and they weren't able to get it off. So this is going to put him five yards farther back downfield. It's going to be real difficult, even though they have the win, to throw the ball deep anywhere over 15 yards into this win. You can't tell what the ball is going to do. And, of course, they have to throw it farther downfield to pick up their first down. And now we've got a wholesale change here. What's he going to do, punt on third down? Looks like it. That's Judge Johnston standing two yards deep in his end zone. Huskers hurriedly get back around midfield. Third and 18 for the Cyclones. Now they're going to run up and put a man in motion. They're not going to punt. Got three wide receivers. They throw over the middle. It is dropped. They were going over the middle. Eddie Brown, their flanker back. That is exactly what you were talking about as far as Jim Wallen. will show you something that you've never seen before and may never see again. He'll do. This will not be the only thing that Wacky Walden will do during the ball game. <laughs> I'll tell you that. He'll have a lot more of these. But this time, Joe, you kind of think he's going to punt this time, right? Fourth and 18, and back in his end zone is Johnston. That was Mike Kroll that made the stop and hit the receiver about the time he made connections with the football. The Nebraska deep Joe, guys, Joe, are 60 yards downfield. That's how this win, they think, are going to carry this football. Doug DeGenero is the backup quarterback who was in doing the signal calling. But they've got Johnston deep. Huskers now bring a man up short. Long, long punt. Carries over Brinson's head, gets an Iowa State bounce. That's got to be one of the longest in the country, I would think, this year. Rolls out inside the 10. What a great break for Iowa State right off the bat. Now, that ball, when it comes down, because it is oblong and funny shape, can bounce anyway. And what it did, Joe, is it bounced right on the right type of the ball and went to Iowa State's favor. 
going to so help Johnson. So far, we're keeping Iowa State in this ball game. That is, Nebraska is. Everything is going their way. That was a 90-9-0 yard punt. His longest to date, 57 yards. He's been averaging 39 yards on 45 kicks. So the Oscars have it back, but not with a field position they'd hope. Brinson thought he had enough room, and he just went over his head and took an Iowa State roll. Now we have the first time out in the ball game, Joe, and we'll be right back. Just a moment with more from Nebraska and Iowa State. Rather right, short time out, the Huskers got off one peg. Tony Carr going to the outside, shoved out of bounds by Allen Patton after a three-yard gain. Here it is again. Just one play before we got back, Joe, and. He picked up about five yards, and now we come back to live action. That's Carpenter at fullback. Carpenter in front of Ken Clark behind Steve Taylor. Hand off to Carpenter. Breaks over the left side. First down, and he's out to the 27. Been a good play for Brian Carpenter. He ran for a touchdown a week ago. Tim Baker, the free safety, made the stop. Number 29 is home's Grundy Center, Iowa. Coach Tom with Dana Brinson standing this side. They're probably talking about the depth of play on a punt down win. You don't let that punt get over your head, but of course with this win, it's hard not to have that happen, Jeff. First and 10 Huskers. Their own 27-yard line open field on the left. Morgan Gregory flanked that way. Taylor on the run. Had no place to go at the 24-yard line. Chased by Anthony Hoskins, he is dropped. Joe, you said it perfectly, no place to go. He couldn't pitch the ball, he couldn't reverse his field, and he couldn't go forward. So he, Taylor did about what he could, and that's just lay down with the ball. Now you're looking at number 45 as an outstanding linebacker, and yet at 6'2", 216, not one of the bigger ones around. That's Mike Shane out of Sweetser, Indiana. Brinson is the flanker to the right side, second and 12 Huskers. Brinson in motion back toward the middle, and off to Clark. About the 28-yard line, he got back what was lost in the first place, so the Huskers are going to be up in about third and ten. And you might think, Joe, this would be the first passing situation for Nebraska where they'd have to put it up. But, of course, Tom Osborne feels that in these particular situations that that's a gamble, and he just might go with the draw or something else, a little reverse, to pick it up on the ground. Huskers have flankers both ways. Morgan Gregory to the bottom of your screen. In motion is Clark. Somebody moved. Let's see who. Flag is down, and was it encroachment, or was it offside? That Iowa one was State really action. hard to see. Iowa State's motioning in the other direction, so it must have been a Nebraska player moving, Joe. Of course, that all that takes is just to lift the hand, or lift the shoulder, or lift the head a little bit. Just a little bit of movement by the offensive line, and as you can see it here, right there, a little, a little bit more than a little bit of movement. He was a whole count off there, Joe. But uh, he moved. Nebraska, uh, the uh, defensive line came across. And, of course, that was a five-yard penalty. Snowfall is enough now to make him wipe the football off. It's placed down on the 23. Huskies would have to get to the 37 to pick up the first down. Iowa State put six men up front. Nebraska flankers both ways and two wing backs. A draw play to Taylor goes nowhere. Steve Taylor, just smothered by everybody. Mark Crowley was number 59, a sophomore out of Bedford, New Hampshire. And the Iowa State defensive unit trots off having done a very good job. Here comes the replay, and, and Foley comes right up the middle and doesn't quite get picked up by the offensive line before he gets to Steve Taylor. As I said, though, Nebraska wasn't going to throw the ball anyway, Joe. That was the quarterback draw, which they've been very successful with all year long. Now they have to punt into that win. Croker's back on his seven-yard line. Gets it away. Line drive and a pretty good spiral into the wind. Goes to the 35. Bounces ahead a couple of yards into the 35, gusting to 40-mile-an-hour wind. Marcus Robertson was back for Iowa State, and he lets it roll dead at the 33. 
Joe, that was a tremendous kick into that wind, exactly what Nebraska wanted to do. 46 yards into a very, very stiff wind, and he kept it low, but he got it just right, just over the guy who was going to return its head and drop down. He could do nothing about it, and that's a great punt. It gives Nebraska better field position defensively than they should have had on that, Joe. Brent Oberg with Joe Henderson and Curtis Warren behind him as the Cyclones take over. Their own 33-yard line. In motion, Henderson to the outside. Oberg on the draw, gives it off to Warren. Finds some daylight. Fumble, oh. fumble on the play, and who's got it? That was at the 47-yard line of Iowa State. Each team is pointing the other way. Let's see who. It's going to be a wrestling match down there on the bottom. If those officials don't jump right in and get to the ball, you see one down there on the bottom. But I guarantee you, whoever had that ball originally is not going to end up with it when this pile is over. So they're going to have to say something. And the guy on the bottom of the pile, Joe, was strong enough to keep it. Iowa State on top of the football, and they retain possession. We could see some. Here it is again. We see the ball come loose. That was a hit by Tim Jackson to jarred it loose. Tim out the safety spot. On top of it is Rich Moore, their right tackle. Senior out of Willows, California. Cyclones first and 10 at their own 47-yard line. Again, they've got Henderson and Warren. This comes back to Henderson, comes right side, down to Nebraska's 45. So you talk about backs around the Big 8. Henderson is a quality back. He was uh, made all Big 8 last year at that position. Comes back this year and has been just as strong this year as last year. He's a very good back and one of the players that Iowa State counts on for a lot of their offense. He has almost had 400 straight game, or four games with 100 yards. He had 103 straight, and he got 99 against Colorado in that loss last week. But he has been their most dependable guy. He's got 2,421 in his career so far. Second down and three. Oberg with only one back behind him, and that is Henderson. Blankers both ways. Gives it off. They got the first down. Down near the Nebraska 42 before Leroy ADN. Joe, with only uh, six minutes and 30 seconds left in the quarter, I mentioned before that Iowa State wanted to shorten the ball game. And by that, I meant shorten the ball game every time Nebraska has the ball. If they don't score, they're getting closer and an opportunity to win. What Nebraska would like to do defensively here is shorten this quarter. Get out of this quarter, get the win behind them, and then they can go into their offense at full gear. Now we're going to have a chance to measure, Joe. You've already called it. You said they had it, right? They have got it, unless they mark it back. Once in a while, you know, the penetration point is uh, up for grabs. The defensive captain, of course, or the offensive captain can call for a measurement any time he wants. The it's eyes confirmed. are still the same, Joe. You were only six inches there, and you were able to pick it up. 42-yard line of the Huskers, so Iowa State moves into Nebraska territory. Scoreless ball game, 6.23 to go. Ground going wide to the left side. In the slot that way is Dennis Ross. Ross, the top of your screen. In motion is Henderson. Hand off to Warren. Gets hit at the line of scrimmage. May have made a yard, possibly a bit more. Huskers not fooled on the draw. Leroy ADN was the guy that was there, and there's Leroy. What a hitter that guy is, Joe. I'm telling you, he can really hammer you, but of course that's been some of his problem this year, that he overruns some tackles uh, because of his enthusiasm, because he's trying to hit so hard. Second and nine, again of the yard. Iowa State with Oberg over the football. In motion is Henderson. Looking, looking, has time, throws it up in the air. Intercepted by Fryer. He's at the 30-yard line, and flags go down all over the place, and that one might be a face mask. It's got to be a face mask from the way they were battling. Uh, and, of course, that would give Nebraska maybe another 10, 15 yards. That interception, though, was just caused by the bat. As we're going to see on the replay here, it gets batted up into the air off the hands of the receiver just a little bit behind him. Fryer picks it up, and, yeah, the first thing he grabs is the face mask, and he holds on a long time. So we're going to pick up another probably five yards. They're going to call that an inverted face mask, Joe. I was going hard and high to Craig Mahoney. Craig is a sophomore, the tight end from Mason City. 
who is an All-Stater, Western Tribune, first All-Stater, Mason City, north of here, 6'3 and 228. Carpenter and Clark are back in. The officials now having not only to wipe off the football, but hold it in place as the wind gusts out of the open end. The north end of Jack Trice Field in Ames. Cold, blustery afternoon, 5.19 to go. Huskers first and 10 after the interception to Clark. Over the 40 to about the 41. Stacked up after a gain of about five yards. And that's what we were talking about, Joe, in our pregame piece when we talked about Clark looking at video of Rogier running, and now he tries to pick his way better. He waits. Last year, he would just bull in there and see what happened. You've got to wait for those big guys in the middle to set up the block. I know I'd wait for him anytime, Joe, especially at the dinner table. Tackle by Tim Baker, who had a pretty good ball game against the Huskers last year with eight tackles. He's a free safety, number 29. Second and four. Taylor with a handoff to his fullback. Very short out is Carpenter, grabbed by Don Edwards, number 43. The tackle on the right side for the Cyclones. You see a play like that, Joe, in the first quarter, and you say, why is Nebraska running that type of play? Tom Osborne does a lot of searching, a lot of fishing to see what's going on in the defensive line. He might be running that play or another to set up a play later on in the ballgame. His power eye for the first time, strong to the open field side. Third down and three, Clark. Shakes loose from one. He is very close to the first down, and if they give him where the ball comes down, he's got it. Robert Lindino, the outside linebacker on the left side, was the guy that made the stop. They're going to wave him ahead. Ray Carruthers. Number 27 is up off the stack. There's Ken Clark back to the huddle. Clark and eight rushes, 24 yards, averaging three. He's had some big days this year. But a slow start today. Scoreless ball game of 3.48 to go opening quarter. A power eye the opposite way this time, and Taylor may be checking off. Iowa State with a six-man front. Pitch back to Clark. Across the 50 to 45, a yard short of the first down. Steve Taylor does that exceptional. In fact, Tom Osborne he says that he does it probably better than any other quarterback he's had. Up at the line of scrimmage, being able to recognize a weakness in the defense of the opponent and check off. Now you see it here, Joe, as the check off and then Nebraska pitches out, gets some good blocks out front, and Clark drives ahead. And we also have an Iowa State player, Edwards. It's a little bit shaken up on the play, Joe, and uh, going off. An official timeout to get him off the field. Don is a junior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 6'3 and 230 pounds. He is a leading tackler among the down defensive linemen. He's got 52. Oscar's second down, a yard short of the first down. That's Morgan Gregory, bottom of just off your screen with the left. Taylor checking off. Gives it to Clark, looks for room, got the first down of the 40. You don't see how, uh, how Joe, that those guys can take that beating. You see Clark got bent back there every time. And every time he gets into that line of scrimmage, that's what's going to happen. Well, Steve Taylor almost lost the ball on the exchange there, but you watch him go into the line here. He gets hit high and then low, and watch him get bent back here. That's a lot of weight and pressure on a ball carry. I don't see how they take it through the whole ball game, but they get tough in that weight room of Nebraska. Number 75, Randy Byrne out of Spencer, Iowa, made this stop. First and 10, Cyclone 40. Fumble. Who's got it? Taylor says Nebraska. So does the official. As they unstack, the white jersey at the bottom. The guy that was supposed Carpenter. to have the ball to yeah. start with, Carpenter. And, of course, that was that new play, Joe, that they put in this year, or at least the new version of the play, where they do a lot of motion in the backfield. It looks like they're going to run a reverse, but instead they hand it off to Clark up the middle. That was the play that broke for big yardage in the Missouri ball game last week. 2.07 to go. Oscar's now second and 11. Comes Clark in motion. Taylor looks at him, throws to him. He's got it. Bounces off. Out of bounds at around the 35, five yards short of the first down. Shoved out by Anthony Hoskins, number 49, the outside linebacker. So Clark went up high for the catch. 
shook the first tackle and got to the 35. Look at it again. It looked like, Joe, that uh, the ball was going to be overthrown when it was first went out, but Clark went up and got it. He really bounced off the tackle there and really surprised him. The tackler thought he was going to bounce him out of bounds, and Clark went on downfield. That was Carruthers, the right cornerback, who had the first shot at him, third and five at the 35. Taylor with a pitch to Clark. Got the first down, the 20, the 15, not out of bounds. Mark Foley, the left end, number 59 for the Cyclones. So that really was a great example of the different Clark that we have this year rather than last year. You watch him here. Wait for his blockers to do the job. Wait for everybody else to do their job and then pick up the lane and carry it on downfield. The much different ball carrier, a more complete ball carrier than just sure power and speed of last year. Richard Bell, number 21, brings the play in. Power eyes going to the right side. Huskers first and 10, just outside the 10. Taylor on the option goes to about the nine. Wrapped up as he tried to cut inside by Tim Baker, the free safety. First flip that ball out there on the option, Joe, you thought it was going to be a touchdown. It looked like Nebraska had it. Now let's go down to the sideline and uh, see what Rich Roberts has to say about the field conditions or whatever, Rich. Dan, we've seen the interceptions and the uh, the, the tipped interception, also the fumbles. The ball boys are trying to keep the balls warm. They put them in a bag. It's called dry ball. They shake them around in there for a little bit, then put it back on the playing field. Let's go back up to the booth. Morgan Gregory flanking, but the play comes to Clark, looking for some running room that goes to the six-yard line. Huskers could pick up a first down without getting the touchdown. The forward marker's on the one. Robert Lindino made the stop. Outside linebacker, we're less than a minute away from the end of the first quarter. As you can just see, Rich, uh, what Rich Roberts was talking about on the sideline there, Joe, is that they have to keep that ball warm, and they have a bag, what he was talking about, they put on the sideline. They also switch the ball on, on almost every down. You can imagine what shape that ball would be in in the fourth quarter if it just stayed out there on the field the whole time. Watch the official unwrap it from the towel and put it down right there. There's the power eye again, third and five for the Huskers, six for the touchdown, five for the first down. Taylor wants to throw, throws his first pass, touchdown, Milliken. And who else would it be, Joe, but Milligan? Every time they throw the ball to him, it's a touchdown. That's seven touchdown this year and 15 receptions. Incredible that he gets open on that. But what causes that? I talked about Tom Osborne setting something else up with this play. Remember two plays ago? They ran the option to this side, and it's, he drops back, throws it to Milligan, who's cleared. What sets that up is the time before on this exact same action, Milligan blocked down. This time he released, went into the end zone. Brennan's kick is up and it's seven to nothing. Make it Berrios, Greg Berrios, number 44, his turn. So the Huskers with only seven seconds remaining in the opening quarter, get seven points on the board. They lead the Cyclones seven to nothing. We'll be right back live to Ames, Iowa and the Nebraska, Iowa State game. on that camera, but I wouldn't want to be up there in his position. He's really into the wind as Nebraska's going to have to kick off into the wind right now. And here comes Drennan. I was taking a fall on the ball at the 35-yard line to shot from our end zone camera. A looping kick that Iowa State elected just to cover. The clock will not take off any more seconds until the official's arm goes down. It was Chad Welding on top of it. Now look at the touchdown again here on slow motion replay. And as you tell you, he's releasing into the end zone. And Steve Taylor makes it look like it's going to be a run and then throws the ball. Last play of the first quarter coming up. It's Oberg, number 16, at cornerback. Henderson and Warren behind him. Pitch comes back. Henderson goes into the middle. Couple of yards. First quarter is history. So after one period on a snowy, blowy day, very blustery wins, but the Huskers got in seven seconds before the first quarter came to an end and lead after one quarter, seven to nothing over Iowa State. We'll be right back live to Ames, Nebraska and Iowa State. After this moment out, it's seven to nothing Nebraska. live 
the names Iowa. Huskers lead at seven to nothing. Iowa State puts the ball in play at their 39 yard line. Oberg at quarterback Henderson and Warren. Behind him, Henderson now with flankers both ways. And Oberg maybe checking off. Gives it off up the middle. Henderson across the 40 to the 45, the 46 yard line. Joe Henderson is a do everything guy. And Lawrence Pete out of Wichita, 6'1 and 270, number 96, makes the stop. That's very close to the first down, Joe. They'll probably have to bring the flags in and measure it here, but it's extremely close. Oscars had six first downs to the Cyclones, two on the ground, 83 yards to 25. Steve Taylor, a pass to Clark and the touchdown strike that went to Milligan is two for two on the day. A total of 95 yards for Nebraska. Iowa State had 25 all on the ground. They threw two passes, one intercepted, the other incomplete. In two punts, the Huskers averaged 35. And in one punt, Iowa State averaged 80 yards. That long one that, uh, with the wind behind it, got over uh, Brinson's head. And the Cyclones, first and 10. Brown in motion to the opposite side, the short side. Oberg with a pitch back to Henderson. Changed his mind, gets very close to midfield, a gain of about four. There you see it, five to two, rushing yards 12. 85 total yards, 97 total yards for the Huskers to 22. Two for two in pass completions, one penalty against the Huskers for five. The Cyclones took three for 15. So it's seven to nothing on the scoreboard as Iowa State breaks the huddle second and six. The ball right at midfield, squarely on the midfield mark. In motion is Blockfeldy going to the opposite side. Hand off to Henderson, no game. That's the line of scrimmage and that was it. Yeah, they uh, were spreading them out there, Joe, and then put a guy in motion. And then we're going to try to run back up the middle. And Le Leroy Etienne stayed at home, didn't take all of that motion and made the tackle. Very strong play there by Nebraska's defensive line and their linebackers. Not surprising from Leroy. It was a top tackle last year, 75. And in the Oklahoma game, you may remember, he had 15. Iowa State, third down and six. Big third down play for the Cyclones. Down seven to nothing. Nebraska's 49. Again, Glockfeldy in motion. Quick goes back, and Henderson with no place to go has to scramble and can't get back to the line of scrimmage. That's just the quarterback's problem there. Some little pushing and shoving. Of course, Thomas is always telling somebody something after every play. And uh, he was telling them there. You see the replay here. It's just the pitch, Joe. The pitch is kind of like a delayed pitch, a hesitation. He doesn't get the ball to him, and then he's got no place to go. And... Thompson, Thomas has got him there, and he's saying, I told you so, or something. Roderick Sorton threw people until he found the one with the ball, and he kept in. Fourth and nine. Cyclones have left the boot for the first time into the win. That's Judge Johnston back on his 33-yard line. Huskers have Brinson deep. Bell, the short man. Low driving kick. Bell watches it. He'll let it go, and it goes down to around the 22, 23-yard line. Mike Bush downs it for the Cyclones, number 85, and so the Huskers leading seven to nothing. Not quite three minutes into the second period, will take over once again. Well, the punters have done an extremely good job, Joe, so far here, a 31-yard punt. But all four of the punts that we've had in this ballgame have been very good. Nobody's put it very high up in the air yet where it had a chance to hang or to flop around, and, of course, the guys don't want anything to do with it. Joe, now we have a timeout before Nebraska takes its next possession, and we'll be back to Ames, Iowa in just a moment with the score. Nebraska 7, the Cyclones nothing. Back at Ames, another very short timeout up the middle. Huskers with Clark carrying goes for two yards, stopped by Don Edwards. There it is again. Second and they gave him four yards in the play. Second and six. Huskins with the win at their back. Taylor the option. The 30. 35 knocked out at the 37. Tim Baker, the free safety, pushed him out of bounds. 
but Steve had enough for the first down. And for the Huskers, their seventh first down of the day with 11.36 to go in the first half. And Joe, really, I don't think Tom Osborne would have asked for anything better than this. This is exactly what he wanted, to be able to control the ball on the ground and then controlling it so much on the ground when Steve Taylor tries to show, throw short. He's done a good job, two for two. So it's going exactly along the lines of the play. Bell is just off your screen to the top. Morgan Gregory to the right side. Huskers have thrown two passes, completed both once for a touchdown. This one to Clark. The 40, the 45, the 50. Stays on his feet at the 40. That's the 35-yard line. Boy, let's look at this one again and count the number of people that had a shot at it. It is really something. They just bowled through that line and did a great job. Of, we're going to look at it from the end zone and see it again. When you see Nebraska's offensive line pick up the blocks, he jumps over a guy, but then, oh, the guys that miss him, three, four, and it takes four guys to take him down. This is really something. Another angle of the replay. You see the blocks at the line of scrimmage, and then he's just going to run over people here. That's power. You can't tackle him with those arm tackles. you got to wrap him up or get a herd of people like they've got there. Ken Clark was recruited by Iowa State. Huskers in the power eye formation. Open field side. Hand off to Carpenter. Nothing. Maybe a yard. From the 36 to the 35, as Brian Carpenter slants in, and inside linebacker Mike Shane brings it down. You can see here on the replay, he almost lost the ball from the center again, and Steve Taylor had checked off and checked to this play. Now, every time he checks off, as we were talking about before, does the play work, and most certainly that time, the check off did not work. This Shane is a tough player. Made 15 tackles against Colorado a week ago, the top tackler on the whole ball club. Clark in motion this time. Handoff coming outside goes to Carpenter, who, or to Richard Bell on the first carry by a wing back today. Jeff Dole, strong safety, number 41 out of Grundy Center, Iowa. The leading tackler in the deep secondary makes his stop. Richard Bell out of Aldadena, California. Excellent athlete. He's we got a player down uh, on the field. Joe, we'll take an opportunity at this time with that player down to go to a break, and we'll be back to Ames, Iowa, with the score, Nebraska 7, the Cyclones nothing. Well, certainly defensively, and maybe on the whole squad, they can ill afford to lose uh, Mike Shane, the inside linebacker, the leading tackler. Looked like a knee injury, and uh, Mitch Roberts will have a report on the sideline in just a moment. Iowa State losing a key not guy on the defense, and Tyrone Davis, number 58, a freshman of Houston, comes in to replace him at middle linebacker. Huskers third down and two to go. Pitch the clock, right side, he's got the first down. To the 24. Don Edwards makes the stop, number 43. Boy, that's extremely hard for anybody to stop. You see Milligan limping there a little bit. There's a little bit of article about him in some of the papers this week that almost every week going into the ball game, he has been injured. But he comes back and he plays in the ball game and he plays great. He has a tremendous ability to play with pain. You can see him all wrapped up there, Joe. But uh, he comes in every week and does a great job. And Ken Clark is already over 100 yards. First and 10. 24-yard line, Iowa State. Nebraska with a flank over the open field side. The clock comes to the right, down to around the 18-yard line before Don Edwards again makes the stop. Cyclones didn't give up a touchdown until only seven seconds are left in the opening quarter. Here it is again. Just going into that offensive line, and they're really taking over a lot quicker than I thought they were going to take over, Joe. I thought maybe it would take a whole half for them to be able to start dominating at the line of scrimmage, but they're knocking them off the line of scrimmage by five or six yards every time. And if this goes on, Ken Clark will have 200 yards before the day's over. Keep in mind, you're watching number 32 run with a bad ankle. Top of the screen is Nate Turner. Pitch comes to Clark. He finds room at the 10, a five, he's in. Unbelievable. This guy, one man doesn't stop him. And now, of course, without Shane, Iowa State really hurting because Shane was the guy picking him up in the middle. There's some of the Cyclone and Husker fans in red. The ones waving the yellow at the red flag and doing the cheering. 
by the Nebraska fans in the end zone. He ran right into them. Really a beautiful run here. Pick it up on the replay, Joe. And you watch. We talked about this a lot. But watch him pick his holes. He just sits back there and dances until he picks the hole. And then he gets around Sledge. And Sledge makes the last block. And right on into the end zone. Extra point is good, Joe. And Nebraska is up. 14 to nothing. Berrios hasn't missed one this year. He's 19 for 19. It becomes 14 to nothing. 8.58 to go. Nebraska on top by two touchdowns at Ames. We'll be right back live to Ames, Iowa, and Nebraska, Iowa State. Huskers lead at 14 0. Huskers leading 14 to nothing. Grennan with the ball being held on the tee will kick it off. 8.58 to go in the first half. Ken Clark from 18 yards out. He's got 122 yards for the day, and Brennan's kick out of the end zone. Let's go to Rich Roberts for a report on Iowa State linebacker Mike Shane. Rich on the sidelines, what do you got? Joe, I was uh, on the Iowa State sideline checking out the injury to Mike Shane. It looked like they were working on his left knee. looked like a minor injury. He got up. He was walking around. Didn't seem to be anything major. I'm not sure if he's going to be back into this ballgame, but I would look for him because, as I said, it does not look to be a serious injury. If you were watching on that replay, you saw that Clark, the only shot at him, really good shot, was by Shane's replacement, Tyrone Davis, who couldn't hold him at about the five-yard line. And the Cyclones, Oberg, with Gottfeldy in motion. Hand off to Henderson. Up to the middle. About two yards, John Marco, number 93, out of Bellevue, Nebraska, makes the stop for the Oscars. We're going to see the touchdown again here, Joe. And it's just a great, great effort by Ken Clark. It's uh, really an effort at the line of scrimmage, but then you see him dance and pick his holes, and the last guy, as you mentioned, the replacement, couldn't get him, and on into the end zone he goes. Second and nine for Iowa State. Their own 20-yard line going into the wind. Checkoff count by Ober. Flankers both ways. Fakes, runs the option. Nope, he's giving it away. Joe Henderson took it off the right side, up short of the 25-yard line, a gain of about three. Iowa State with third and relatively long. Brad Thomas and Leroy Adian combined for the stop for the Huskers. There's what it looks like on the sidelines for the Cyclones. It's Jim Walden, their head coach in his second year. Joe, you wonder how long he will let this go before he really opens up also. You would think that he can't win this type of ball game and would have to do something else. Iowa State, third down and five. Big third down play as Oberg again may be checking off. Now he calls a timeout. John Glotfeldy was in motion, but they called a timeout, and we'll take one with him. Right back live to Ames, Iowa, for Nebraska and Iowa State. 7.36 to go. The Huskers lead at 14 to nothing first half. That's Henderson scrambling around, and he looked like he was trapped, and now he's very close to the first down. He's about a yard short. Up to the 29, he needed the 30. Henderson, who can run sideways faster than some people can go straight ahead, brought down by Reggie Cooper, the strong safety. A yard short of the first down, and the Cyclones again will have to punt into the wind. Judge Johnston comes out. He'll stand back about his 12-yard line. Huskers have Brinson back around their own 40-yard line. Remember, the wind gusting from left to right up to 40 miles an hour. That was an 80-yard punt, his longest of his career for Johnston, with the win in the first quarter. We should see a return here, Joe, if Nebraska can just get underneath the ball and catch it before it hits the ground. Low driving kick. Brinson takes it at his 41. Very close to midfield on the return. Brinson fielded the line drive, got about a nine-yard run back. Looks like there's a flag down on the play. I tell you, you throw that flag today and it's five yards downfield, so it is not necessarily where it comes down that the infraction occurred. <laughs> that was a 30-yard punt, Joan. It looked like a pass, a line drive. Looks like he cocked it up and fired it downfield. But we'll see what the penalty is here. I know Nebraska's going to take the ball if it's against them. And it is. Oop, clip against Nebraska. They have offsetting penalties. We'll see what's going to happen here. We have motion against, uh, or legal procedure against Iowa State, and a clip against Nebraska. So I guess the opportunity would be either play it over 
or take, uh, Nebraska would have to take the penalty on the clip after they had returned the ball. So they're looking to the sideline right now saying what we're going to do. Coach Osborne is figuring it out himself. <laughs> That's Bill Bobor out of Amarillo, the good guy talking with the referee. Bill is the backup tackle to John Nelson or to the guard spot on the right side. And Tom and his coaches are huddling with the other official at the side. There you see him. There's Jim Walden looking in from the opposite side. So the conference is going on both ways, and it's going to be the Huskers football. I'm sure what Walden didn't like there, the reason he's out on the field kind of uh, working the officials, and the officials were over there huddled with Tom Osborne, almost trying to say, figure out what you want to do here, Tom, and then we'll call it. But uh, they were just explaining the situation to Osborne, and it looks like uh, it's exactly, as I said before, what was going to happen is Nebraska's going to take the ball, and then the 15-yard penalty for the clip after that. And to put it back to the 33-yard line for the Huskers, who have scored on a pass to Milliken, and a sparkling run from 18 yards out by Kenny Clark. A couple of good drives. One of the men of the wind with only seven seconds to go in the opening quarter. And the other one uh, downwind in the second period at 6.39 left in the first half. Gregory is off the screen to the left side as a flanker that way. Bell is in the slot. Taylor with a handoff up the middle to Brian Lance Lewis now at, at fullback for the first time. Lewis out of Scott City, Kansas. Number 18, and also Tyrese Knox is in, I believe, for the first time at Ibeck. Tyrese has had some time at fullback, and Mike Shane, the Iowa State fans, I'm sure are delighted, is back in the lineup at that middle linebacker spot number 45. The leading tackler went out a little bit ago with the knee, and he's back in. Second and five. Taylor. That's Tyrese uh, across the 40. I believe he's about a yard short of the first down. Jeff Dole, strong safety, made the stop along with Bob Lendino, the outside linebacker, and that wind does not abate a bit. And that it's becoming now enough snow that it might be a visibility factor. Before, it was just a nuisance because it was blowing the ball around. I guarantee it's going to be a nuisance for all these people in red going home tonight, Joe. If this stuff starts sticking to the highway, there's going to be a lot of trouble out there. Third down, two to go for the Huskers. That's Morgan Gregory flanking to the open field side. Taylor with a pitch back to Clark. He's got the first down. He's up almost to midfield. A big of Tyrese Knox. Knox on his second carry gets it to the 49-yard line of the Huskers. There's Tyrese. Daly City, California is his home. He's only 5'10". He looks bigger than that. Sit on the re here, Lee page, Joe, and they can do this almost at will now. Pick up seven or eight yards every time they pitch the ball right or pitch it left. And, of course, as long as Nebraska continues to do that, Tom's going to call that play. It's going to be very difficult for the Iowa State defense to stay in there. We've got a timeout on the field. 5.17 to go in the first half of play. We'll be right back live to Ames, Iowa and Nebraska, Iowa State. Just a moment, the score, the Huskers 14, the Cyclones nothing. Back live in Ames, Iowa. Huskers ball, they lead 14 to nothing, their own 49 yard line. Tyrese Knox at eye back. Lance Lewis at fullback, power eye, strong to the right. Taylor fakes, option play, 45. 40, 35, cuts back. 28-yard line, and Anthony Hoskins, the outside linebacker, grabbed him by the shirt and drags him down. What an athlete this guy is, Joe. Taylor is just remarkable. If you wanted to go anywhere in the country and start to build a football team, you might choose this fellow right here. He can throw the ball, and an awfully good runner has tremendous agility and athletic ability and goes on down the field and picks up a big chunk of yardage. When you get Clark and Taylor both going at you, it's extremely difficult to control. His credentials are pretty good in high school. He broke Marcus Allen's school record, his high school in California. Tyrese Knox is a deep back. Taylor runs the option, cuts up. He's at the 20, the 15. Just made it. Two big plays there, Joe, and he picks up about 45 yards at a chunk, and he's just so difficult to bring down. Talking about Clark using his blockers, he just weaves his way in behind him and goes on downfield. 
I'm telling you, look on the replay here and you'll see him from ground level as he just keeps the ball out in front, weaving back and forth, setting up those big guys in front of him. You see the last block there by Money, and he goes right on in for the touchdown. Barrios trying for his third straight extra point. He's got it. And for the year, he's 20 for 20. And the Huskers lead it 21 to nothing with 4.46 to go. Some of the fans who have made the migration will be back in live at Ames, Iowa, Nebraska, Iowa State in a moment. The score, the Huskers 21, Iowa State nothing. kicking off carries about three yards deep in the end zone and Johnston downs it for the Cyclones will bring it out to the 20. Here goes uh, the replay on the scoring play Joe and Taylor just picks that hole darts through it and he's got three guys downfield and you see Monty Constantine making the last block there and he goes down in for the touchdown. 67 yard drive it took five plays consumed less than two minutes Steve Taylor caps it from 28 yards out down for Ken Clark, a touchdown for Milliken, and that one for the quarterback Steve Taylor. Iowa State now with over a good quarterback. First and ten from their 20. Fakes to Henderson, runs, hits it to Henderson, a yard gain, and that was it. And so far, Joe, the uh, Iowa State coaching staff has not decided to open this ball game up. They're down 21 to nothing. And as I say, they keep trading punts here and keep trying to run the ball against Nebraska. There's no way they can win it. But I don't think they're willing to open it up really until they get the win back in the third quarter. So they're going to stay pretty close to the running game. I don't think you'll see anything funny for a while yet. Second and nine. Cyclones and the snow comes down even hotter and the wind blows and swirls even stronger. Over a good quarterback the middle and off goes to Curtis Warren and he's got maybe a yard not much more than that out to around the 22 Huskers unstacked Kent Wells number 91 out of Lincoln East 285 and 65 here's Caliendo and if you were here earlier you saw the feature on him he's won that weak side linebacker spot from sophomore Pat Terrence and between the two of them, that position's in pretty good hands. It looks like Iowa State also, Joe, has just decided that they think they can run up the middle on Nebraska, and that's where they've been attacking, not coming to the outside at all. Big third down play for the Cyclones, third and six. It's not felt in motion. Over. Hands off on the draw, and Henderson goes nowhere. Joe Henderson smothered, never had a chance. That was Jeff Mills, number 42, out of Montclair, New Jersey, the right outside linebacker first guy to him so we've got a timeout with 311 to go in the first half we got a timeout joe we're going to see the replay here of broderick coming in broderick's going to come in and he's just going to be standing there waiting on the ball carrier when he gets it ball carrier goes by him and then mills comes up and makes a very good tackle uh, of course joe uh, nebraska called timeout here Okay, we got a report from Rich Roberts. Let's go to the sidelines for it. Well, it's, uh, you wonder how the guys are trying to keep warm down here. Well, they got these big coats on that they're wrapping themselves around. And some of the players, some of the players also have some tights on. If you can see a shot of one of the players, shots are, uh, the shot around his calf there, you can see that uh, he has some tights on trying to keep his legs warm. And also the big coat trying to keep him all bundled up, trying to keep warm and dancing around down here too. So anything they can do to keep warm, to keep their body going, to keep the heat going inside their body, to try to keep warm and a very miserable, very cold afternoon of football here at here in uh, Ames, Iowa. Joe and Dan? Cyclones down 21 to nothing. Gonna have to give it up. Fourth down and eight to go, and Judge Johnston will be back at his eight-yard line to get it away, kicking into the wind. Number 19 back and forth. There is Derek DeGenero. He's a senior quarterback. He's all over the field on the punch. Huskers have Brinson standing back just his own side of the 50. Low drive and kick, and the wind gets up. It's a good bounce for Iowa State. Comes up to midfield. Cuts down there by the Cyclones. So the Huskers will pick it up on their own 49-yard line after a 29-yard punt into the wind. The 3.02 to go first half. Nebraska leads it 21 to nothing, and there's Mr. Hornusker braving the blizzard. 
Yeah, so, and uh, I just want everybody to know that's watching the telecast that Rich Roberts and I had a big fight over whether I was going to be able to do sidelines or whether I was going to be able to be up here. And he won out, so I'm up here and he's down there in the cold, so. And the Huskers, Tyrese Knox, Lance Lewis at fullback, Knox at the eye back. Taylor wants to throw, throws it long, and Dell goes for it, can't get it at the 10. Richard was screened away for a moment. I think the ball was in the air, and I'm not sure because he didn't expect it or because with the snow in his eyes looking back up into the wind, it might have been tough to pick up. It'd be hard to see, Joe, looking back into all of that snow. Uh, Tom Osborne does this every once in a while when he gets the ball at midfield. He'll take one crack down deep, and, of course, he tried that. That ball would have been hard to throw, overthrow, underthrow, throw anywhere with that wind blowing the way it is. There you see it. Rushing 235 for the Huskers. Plus seven gives them 242 to 51 edge in total yard. He just knocks the 45 to the 44 yard line of Iowa State. They would need the 40 for the first down. Tyrese, who's been averaging seven and a half yards every carry, stopped by strong safety Jeff Dole of the Cyclones. Since, uh, they're switching backs here, giving Clark just a little bit of breathing room with Tyrese. Tyrese has been a very valuable guy to the Nebraska football team this year. Huskers third and three. It's Bell in motion. Taylor fakes the pitch. The 35, the 30, the 25, and dropped from behind near the 23-yard line by Adam Beck, the free safety. Steve Taylor, who is having himself one of those days that do not surprise Husker fans nor his coaches. Joe, and at halftime, uh, we'll have an Orange Bowl official up here who I'm sure is enjoying what he's seeing here from Steve Taylor as we watch the replay. But the Orange Bowl official will come up and join us at halftime to discuss that situation, the Orange Bowl and all the other bowls. We have to explain snow to it. Lewis, the only man back to throw it. Incomplete. That was Morgan Gregory at the 10-yard line. Taylor a little bit behind him. That's the first incompletion by Steve Taylor, and he gunned it. Gregory tried to make the catch. Morgan's a leading receiver with 19, two of them for touchdowns this year. The nearest man to him, defender for Iowa State, was that middle linebacker, Mike Shane, who seems to be every place. There's Taylor, one for three, seven yards, and that touchdown to Milligan. The other one to Clark was almost a no-gainer. Second and ten. Ball at the Cyclones, 23-yard line. That's Tyrese Knox in motion. Taylor runs the option. 15 to 10. My goodness, Joe, that is just terrific. I mean, now he had an option there, as course he does when he rolls out, to either run the ball or throw the ball. And the poor defenders from Iowa State had to cover the two receivers that were in the area. When the receivers cut to the outside, they sort of went to them, turned their back on Steve Taylor, and Steve Taylor just, see, he's going to throw the ball. No, decides not. I'm going to go down the field, makes a move on the last guy, goes right on into the end zone. When they talk about quick feet, here's one of the guys they're talking about. Berrios will try it. He's three for three today in extra points. Godowski's hold. Jerry Godowski, the backup quarterback out of Fremont. It's off to the left side, but it's good. 28 to nothing, left near the goalpost on the left side. Godowski, with those cold hands, I think, has had a little bit of trouble, even though the snaps haven't been that bad. Getting that ball down on the tee as Barrios comes forward, but he's made it both times the last two, and it's 28 to nothing. As you can see here, Joe, again on the replay, as our timing sheets blow out of the booth. Tremendous wins, but Steve Taylor has the option to throw or run, makes a terrific move right there, and goes on in for the touchdown. Steve Taylor, who has been operating her good chair of the time, he has thrown 11 touchdown passes this year. He has statistics that I think will certainly keep him in the forefront when they talk about Heisman Award. There's Dr. Tom, still hatless on the sidelines, doing a little pacing, and Chris Brennan will kick it off. And before that, let's check with Rich Roberts on the sidelines. Rich? Joe, you know, so much is said about T Steve Taylor, how well he throws the football and how well he runs it. Well, another thing you got to keep in mind, the guy is a very, very physical football player. He could take a hit. Last week after the Missouri game, Coach Osborne said, 
They really came after him. The Tigers have pounded Steve, but he took it. The guy can really take a hit and play some fine football. Back up to the booth. Here's Drennan's booth that's going to sail into and out of the end zone. Steve's only problem this year, and he went out one time and scared everybody a little bit, but pinched nerve in his neck is a recurring injury that can come at any time. It really can, but uh, Rich Roberts is exactly right about that guy, and the reason he can take those hits is he spends a lot of time in the weight room. Now, a lot of quarterbacks around the country would not do that, but Steve Taylor is in there almost every day working on that body. Of course, those muscles, that muscle tone that he's able to put on there protects him with those hits. Now back to play-by-play, -play. Joe the Cyclones. Oberg with only Henderson behind and flankers both ways are down for four touchdowns. Hand off to Henderson and he's grabbed as he comes out and then wrestled back was Leroy Adiana got the first hit and then a whole host of white jerseyed Huskies moving back to around the 15. So Henderson who can do the 40 and 4-8, 4-5-8 and is a High school 200 meter champion in his hometown of Chicago. Joe and uh, you know, Nebraska the took a timeout there. They, I wondered if they would do that. They would. Ha they had timeouts left, and so they're going to take a timeout here and maybe force Iowa State to kick the ball into the wind again. Now the Iowa State fans are booing. I don't know why. This is football. Maybe they're booing because they want to get off the uh, out of the stands in a hurry and get to something warm. And Nebraska's taking a timeout and making them stay there longer. But. This is football. Make them kick into that win. See if you can get another score before the half runs out. I think I recall a Tom Osborne quote that says he finds it difficult to believe that any coach could be accused of running out the score in the first half. Uh, how can you? I mean, you see what happens to UCLA just last week. They're ahead 27 to 7. What happens? They get beat. 28 points in this ball game you would think would be enough to win it, but who knows? With the weather, with some turnovers, you can't tell. This Second. is exactly what Nebraska should be doing. Second and eight, high formation for the Cyclones. They have one timeout left. The Huskies have one. Minute 42 to go in the first half. And motion is Brown, the short side. Handoff up the middle goes to Curtis Warren. And he's got the 25 and not much more than that. Five yards short of the first down. The Huskies will choose to use their last timeout here. Joe Sims is number 56 out of Sudbury, Massachusetts. He and Mike Kroll, sophomores from that city. Joe, the left tackle at 6'4 and 285. Chris Tom will probably take his last time out in the ballgame after this third down, which should give him about 50 seconds to see if they can get something done. Third and four. The Cyclones could use four yards here and keep the ball to the end of the half. Huskers are up 28 to nothing. Rotfeldy again in motion to the open field side. Pitch comes back. Henderson just has no place to go. Grabbed by Leroy Adrian, and let's see if the Huskers with 51 seconds. Yep, they do use their last time out. And you can hear them, Joe. They're booing again. But I don't know why. I don't know why anybody would boo any except, yes, if you want to get out of the cold and uh, maybe get into your car or get out to some refreshments, maybe that's why. But I know why they're booing. I think Nebraska's trying to run up the score. Well, as you just mentioned, running up the score in the first half, you can't be doing that. Just, Unless you're Johnston. ahead 70 to nothing. Johnston will be back at his 11-yard line. We've got Dana Brinson at his own 48. And shorter than that at the Cyclone 45 is Richard Bell. The ceiling gets a little lower. The wind gets a little more blustery. And the snowfall increases. It's damp. And it's cold. And Johnson will try to kick into that win. Well, Cusinero is calling the camp signal both ways. No driving kick. Bell lets it go. Brinson's waiting for it. Now he's going to let it go. And it's going to roll down about the 39-yard line of Nebraska. Huskers wanting not to handle a slippery football in any kind of traffic that was a pretty good job a 36 yard putt again by judge johnson who's having a good day his average all year on good days and bad 39 yards and he's been very near that and somebody kicks into the wind today plus that 80 yard earlier you see some fans there are kind of underneath the overhang joe and i'm sure they're happy for that tom osborne's going to try to get a quick score here at least get into position to kick a field goal 
Huskers in their spread formation. Back to throw is Steve Taylor. Looking, looking. Going to run to the outside. Now he's going to throw, and it's done downfield. Complete at the 33-yard line. Coming back for it was Nate Turner. He needed to get out of bounds there, Joe. Of course, the clock will stop because it's the first down, and Steve Taylor is calling the play right now. The officials will mark it for play, and Nebraska will be ready. Tyrese knocks it at back. There's Milligan coming in as well at tight end. See the replay there, and that's a great catch. The only thing Turner needed to do was get out of bounds. He came back at least five yards to make that catch. And Taylor winging it down uh, on the line. Now is again time to throw. Throws over the middle. Caught by Morgan Gregory at the 12-yard line of Iowa State. And again, Oscars have no timeouts left. But on the first down marking, they do call timeout until they get the change move for Only 12 seconds left here, and they're going to have to get up to the line of scrimmage, throw it into the end zone, get it off quick, so they can get their field goal unit on the field if that's what they want to do. Lance Lewis and Tyrese Knox back with Taylor. That's Bell at the right side. Whistle sounded. Apparently, the Oscars did not get the playoff. They're going to stop it with four seconds to go. And we see... is going to stop here, Joe, because what could happen here is it wasn't an infraction, I don't think. I think the officials are just talking about it, and they're liable to mark this ball for play and start time, so Nebraska should be ready to kick the ball as soon as they mark it. This would be a 32-yard field goal. Berrios, who's kicked all the extra points today and who in his career so far this year is five of seven in field goals with a long one of 48 yards. We'll have a 32-yarder. From the hash mark on the right side, only four seconds to go. Godowski will hold it. Greg Berrios out of Omaha Creighton Prep. And they're still in the fight for a back-to-back -back state high school championship. Kodowski trying to keep his hands warm as you see tucked inside his jersey talking with Barrios now they're going to put some time back on the clock they had inadvertently let a couple of seconds run off they're notifying both benches that they've added two so it's six seconds now from the time the official's arm goes down you're looking at Barrios left-footed soccer style kicker he's had four extra points today this will be his first field goal try this thing, Joe, and the time is going to start as soon as he marks it. As soon as he drops his arm, it's going to start as it did. Five seconds, four, plays down, kicked up, and it is good. Time has expired. Huskers with a field goal by Barrios, a 32-yarder, stretched their lead to 31 to nothing. Yes, and, and boy, they're really booing as they go off the field as Tom Osborne goes off here but absolutely no reason for it, and I'm sure Tom will feel exactly the same way. You can see, Joe, though, a lot of fans have left. So they just cut out of here because it is miserable down there on the field with all that wind blowing around. Huskers got seven points in the first quarter, the rest of them in the second. We'll be back in a moment to Lanes, Iowa, Nebraska and Iowa State. The score, 31-0 Huskers. State fans bitter about the field goal in the closing seconds have carried it over into the band who take the field now. Nebraska's band is out there, and they drew a few cat calls as they went out. Nebraska dominating that first half of play. Even into the win, they got on the board seven to nothing on a third down pass. Taylor to Milliken and made it 7-0 with Burrios' extra point. Then Clark from 18 yards out. Ran for over 122 yards early to make it 14 to nothing with Berrios' extra point. Steve Taylor with a 29-yard run. Boy, his, his picture runs every time. 
set up by a 22 yard run and it was 21 to nothing. Taylor again almost a replay with 23 yards in for his 101st yard of the day. 28 to nothing and then the one we've been talking about Barrios with a 32 yard field goal after considerable hesitation two seconds retort restored to the clock and it was a score of 31 to nothing and the Cyclone fans thinking that uh, maybe Mr. Osborne is not playing fair by uh, the uh, Cardinal and goal by adding it on even though it was still 30 minutes of playing time didn't to let them know about it. Well, I'm sure, Joe, it has nothing to do with the uh, the bowls. We're going to talk to a bowl official in a minute. Although last week, Nebraska only won by eight points, and they dropped two positions. That's got to be on Tom Osborne's mind. Although knowing Tom Osborne, he's just concerned about winning this football game and nothing else. And he thinks right now it could possibly take 31 points to win it. When you've got an opportunity to get points in the first half, you should do it, Joe. Strange things can happen, I think, on blustery days. Who would have, for instance, thought that two Huskers would have over 100 yards at halftime? Clark with 122 and Steve Taylor with 101. Tyrese Knox on three carries with 18 yards and Carpenter in six tries has a total of 25. Henderson has been the top gainer for Iowa State and Joe has had just flat no place to run most of the time. 14 carries, he's gained a total of 30 yards. Warren in five carries gained 27. Most of his carries were early and Oberg has scrambled one time and lost seven yards. So Iowa State's offense shut down a little bit by the wind today. They like to pass. They threw for three touchdowns in the upset of Missouri. They haven't been able to do that effectively or very often today, and their ground game has just been not so far. Well, the Huskers are rolling on all cylinders. So we've got uh, a ball game that has kind of gotten to where a lot of people didn't think it would be, especially on a day like today. 31 to nothing at halftime. Nebraska leads it on four touchdowns and a Barrios field goal. And now we're going to go down on the sideline to Rich Roberts, who has a story for us about a new Nebraska coach. New in that he's been here for a couple years and the job he's doing. Now let's join Rich Roberts on the sideline. Well, as anybody that knows anything at all about Nebraska football knows that the Huskers like to run the ball. That was evident, obviously, in the first half. Nebraska did not throw it very much. But the Husker receivers have to be ready. They have to be ready to be on the end of a Steve Taylor pass at all times. Here's a look at the man whose job it is to make sure his receivers are prepared. It's ironic that Ron Brown is the man in charge of the Huskers receivers. You see, Brown has spent the better part of his football career defending the pass. First as a defensive back at Brown, and then as the Bruins defensive backfield coach for three years. Since coming to Nebraska, Brown has been on the receiving end of the passes. It's a change which has been successful, but one which has taken some work. Anytime you come from a, a, a different situation, from uh, off, uh, defense to offense, and having to learn new players and and uh, and then kind of reestablishing yourself in your own grounds and exactly what your philosophy is going to be as compared to the way maybe Gene Huey did it at one time. Um, that's always a tough transition for the players and, and the new coach. I think he's kind of relaxed a lot since he first got here. He was kind of, you know, a little, being a new guy and all things like that. I think he was a little, uh, you know, walking on glass a little bit, you know, a little hesitant on dealing with people, but now I think he's, he's a lot more comfortable in his job and his position and things like that, so he's, he's a lot easier to deal with now. Gregory credits Brown's perfectionist attitude for help making him a much better receiver now than he was in the past. Morgan has responded by being Brown's top pupil this year with a team leading 19 receptions and two touchdowns. Not bad numbers for an offense which runs the ball 80% of the time. And convincing his players to sit tight and await the pass has been one of Brown's toughest assignments. I think it's a, it's a society, especially geared uh, with the younger set, to be more me and I oriented mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, not as quite team oriented as it used to be in years past. I think uh, it it's becomes a difficult process to teach youngsters to be unselfish. I think that there's the level of talent is here. I think these kids could play anywhere in the country. I think that the, what they're accustomed to is different. They have to be blockers. They have to be blue-collar type people. And the thing that I'm most proud about them is probably their unselfishness. Mm -hmm. they, they have to give up the statistics. And I tell them if they play hard and play well in what they do do, the NFL and other people will notice what they do. It's halftime here in Ames. The Huskers lead Iowa State 31 to nothing. We'll be back with more halftime activities right after these messages. at 
at Jack Trice Field Cyclone Stadium in Ames, Iowa on one of the worst days I think maybe the Huskers ever come visiting, although 13 years ago, Bob Devaney brought a ball club over here uh, a little longer than that. George Amundsen, I remember, on the very last play, threw a pass into the end zone, was caught. They tied the ball game, missed the extra point, and it was a tie game, and Iowa State was... Uh, off to one of the two ties that they've had in the history of this series. They've won 14 times. Nebraska's won 66 of them. And today, the Huskers are on their way to a, one of the more lopsided scores, 31 to nothing. And some of the fans are upset about it, but the stats are just about the same, Dan. 17 first downs to three. Huskers on the ground with two guys going over 100 yards each. 278 to the Cyclones' total of 49. A total with four for seven passing by Nebraska of 338 yards to North Iowa State's 49. They have not picked up a passing yard yet. Nebraska had almost twice as many plays in the first half, 41 to 22. And on third down, they were able to convert it six times in nine tries. Iowa State in five tries, not able to convert a third down. It just has not been the Cyclones' day. It hasn't been the Cyclones' day, Joe. But let's do a little talking now about the bowl situation around the country. Uh, as we said at the end of the half, I didn't think Tom Osborne was concerned about a point spread, whether you're going by this amount of uh, points or that amount of points. But it does become very critical now, as there was a lot of talk this week about Nebraska moving up in the ratings. They have to continue to move up in the ratings to get in position for those bowls. Now, of course, if Nebraska wins their next three ball games, they automatically this ball game and two other ball games, they automatically go to the ro to the uh, rose to the Orange Bowl. Now, in that Orange Bowl situation, the opponent's going to be extremely important. There's been a lot of talk early on about. Notre Dame and West Virginia ending up in a bowl for the national championship. The only thing that's wrong with that and really bothers the bowl people is both those people could lose the ball game after the matchup. If one of them loses a ball game, then you most certainly don't have a national championship mass up if you do because of this situation. If they have lost, right, one of those guys has lost, then if the other one the loser beats that undefeated team, and it's not a national championship. My scenario is this, Joe. Here's what's got to happen to make it perfect, right? Now, UCLA has got to beat Southern Cal. Southern Cal then beats Notre Dame. With that scenario, that throws it completely open for everybody in the country again. If you go into a situation where Notre Dame beat Southern Cal that last ball game after Southern Cal beating UCLA, then Notre Dame almost has the national championship wrapped up going into the bowl game. And it's going to be very difficult for Nebraska to come up and get that uh, national championship try. But if the scenario I just described happens, then Nebraska and everybody else in the country is right back in the national championship picture. The team you didn't mention is Miami University. Of course, they've lost only one time by one point to the Irish at South Bend. And if those things happen, if Notre Dame is defeated by Southern Cal and Southern Cal does lose to UCLA, then probably Miami is going to be the number one rated team at the end of the season. Will they be the host team in the Orange Bowl? Does the Orange Bowl committee uh, want Miami again against the Big A champ? I think the Orange Bowl committee most certainly will take Miami. And it's not that they don't want Miami or that they wouldn't like to have Miami there because of their power. The only thing that having Miami in the bowl game does is it cuts down on at least 20,000 fans that might travel to the bowl game. And, of course, that's why cities sponsor bowl games. That's why they get involved in them, because of the number of the people that travel there. You take, for instance, when Nebraska played uh, Clemson in the Orange Bowl. Nebraska had about 25,000 fans down there, and Clemson had 35,000. When you figure that every fan is going to spend them a minimum of $250 per person in the time that they spend down there to visit, that's a lot of money that's being spent in Miami. So if they would take Miami again. They also would take Florida State if that's a top-ranked team. What you want is to build a, build a prestige of your bowl, and everybody, of course, would like to have that national championship bowl game, but it's going to be very difficult for that to happen if you go out here and match up Notre Dame and West Virginia prior to those last two ball games. And of course those matches are going to have to 
uh, happen. What I think is not going to happen is I think bowls are going to be very, very cautious of what they do leading up to the next couple of weeks, Joe. And it's not going to unwind and unravel until we get a couple of big ball games out of the way. Miami's still going to have to handle LSU at Baton Rouge, and that's a tough job. We're at halftime. It's 31 nothing. Huskers over the Cyclones. We'll be back with Nebraska, Iowa State, and more of our halftime show after this moment out. 31 nothing, Nebraska. That's how it looks at halftime. You see a couple of minutes left to go. Huskers with one touchdown in the first quarter. And adding the other 24 points in the second quarter on three touchdowns and a Barrios 32-yard field goal have pretty much controlled this ball game. And as you can see from the middle of the winter guard, it's a chilly day. It's windy. And if you're in the Channel 3 area, probably you already guessed that if you're out here today, even inside and dressing like this, it's got to be miserable for those folks who have largely vacated the stands, and I think some of them may not be coming back because the Iowa State fans figure that 31-0 is as much as they want to watch today and have headed for home. The Nebraska faithful, I think, having made the migration, may be still sticking around. I think the Nebraska people will stay here as long as anyone will, Joe. <laughs> but I tell you what, if it gets much colder, you're not going to see Rich Roberts and I. You're going to have to do the ball game yourself. <laughs> hey, Rich was looking like he was really cold. And there's a fellow that just deigns a hat or anything else. He wears that red jacket and usually a headset and uh dr tom osborne is on his way to his ninth win and 10 starts this year i want to ask you a little bit ago what's tom's feeling on the big eight tie up with the orange bowl as he said one way or the other would he like to see it come to an end he would like to see it come to an end most certainly because he thinks you can have a lot more freedom to match up the national championship of course the big eight if it continues the way it is with oklahoma and nebraska they're always going to have a great representative in that bowl game now we're going to look at the first half highlights here joe and just to finish that point, Joe, he likes the money. He likes the tie-up for those reasons because it brings a lot to his program. But he would rather not see the official tie-ups. There you see the first touchdown to Milligan. Come right back here with a very nice run, pitch and run. He sets up his blocks, last block there by Sledge as he goes in. Clark goes in for the touchdown. Nebraska has just completely dominated this. I said early on that I thought Nebraska's offensive line would dominate later on in the ball game. They dominated early. And then Steve Taylor, when you got a guy running behind an offensive line like Steve Taylor, he can make things happen. And he makes it happen three times in succession here. This time, they run the play to this side. He's got an option to throw a run, pulls it down, makes a super move right there. You talked about quick feet, Joe. And you're right, he's got them. Steve Taylor, we had to say, dominated this half on his own with Nebraska's offensive line taking over. But Steve Taylor really played a heck of a half. And I mentioned early on in the with his first run that if you wanted to go out and get a guy to build a team around, it would be that guy right there, Steve Taylor. Jerry Godowski, the backup quarterback to Steve, who was probably a better quarterback than he's been given a chance to show, has been the guy who has been holding for all of the extra points on the field goal, and that's a yeoman job today. It hasn't been easy. Cold fingers. He got the ball down and got it in place for Berrios. Uh, and the Huskers have rolled to a 31-0 lead and just dominate the stats. Taylor has thrown seven times, four completions, and he's thrown to three different receivers to Clark, Milliken, and Turner. Turner's with a 28-yard comebacker, and with six seconds on the clock and the clock running, Berrios came on and notched a field goal, his sixth of the year in uh, eight tries, and that was the last three points that Nebraska had. There's the numbers for, that we've been talking about. First down, you see a big edge for the Huskers. Total yards, 334 to 49. Fumbled it twice and not lost it. Iowa State fumbled it once and didn't lose it. Iowa State has no yards in that second number of 49 total yards and 49 uh, rushing yards for the day. They haven't had anything through the air. Possession times. Huskers have more than five minutes on them. Nebraska lost the opening flip. Iowa State took the wind. Huskers elect to take the football to start the second half. And as you can see, they're still holding the towel over it. They're still holding it on the tee. They finally beckoned somebody in. It's Jeff Dole. Strong safety going to come in to hold it on the tee for the kick. So Nebraska leading 31 to nothing. We'll get the football. And we've got 30 minutes of football to go. And the snow and the wind continue. 
Base kickers kicking downwind, having a field day. That one carried completely out of the end zone, and that's Jeff Shudak, who's a sophomore. They're going to enjoy having him around. He played his prep football at Council Bluff St. Albert. He got two field goals against Colorado, 149 and 152 yards. He has not missed in 32 straight extra points. And the kicking downwind today, I think there has not been uh, a run back at all. Everything has gone out of the end zone. Punting has been admirable, I think, when you've had to punt into the wind. Here come the Huskies. Clark Carpenter. High back and full back. Taylor at quarterback. Pitch comes to Ken Clark. Runs out of a tackle to the 20. Goes to the 25, maybe the 26. Shoved out of bounds by free safety Tim Baker. And, Joe, you see those decisions that uh, coaches have to make going into a ball game. Where do they take the win? Where do they take the ball? And uh, Iowa State decided to take the win in the first quarter, thinking that May might be able to stop Nebraska. Nebraska did only get seven points in that first quarter, but now Nebraska gets the ball right back after putting up 24 points in the second quarter. Flanker and wing back to the open field side. Hand off to Carpenter, breaks through for a moment to the 38, 39 yard line. He's got the first down. Boy, you see them hammer this play in here and hammer it in there and hammer it in there. The first three or four times they run the play, it doesn't seem to do anything. And you say, why is Tom Osborne running that play? And all of a sudden, it starts to pop open, as you see right here. They get a very good cross block in the middle from the two guards, and he just pounds Carpenter, just pounds it up in there and kind of runs over a guy at the end. You see the snow flying up from his feet. That's Taylor up close, first and 10 at his own 40. Richard Bell in motion. On the draw, coming outside. Clark. What a move. 47-yard line. A gain of seven will be second and three. We're barely into the third period. And Big Glazier was out there on the end, roaming. And as he says, he get a the reason he likes to get out there is you can see him coming around here is he likes to get out there and hit a littler guy. And I guarantee you this time he's hitting a littler guy there. Knocks him off the ball, and then Clark is able to cut inside and go on down the field. That's three straight tackles for the free safety, number 29, Tim Baker. He'll be back next year. There's the numbers on Ken Clark. High formation, power eye, strong to the right. They run the opposite way. Taylor carries it across midfield to the 46 of Iowa State. Another first down, and again, for the fourth straight time, it's been Tim Baker on the stop with the Cyclones. Taylor... I don't believe holding his elbow. Looked like he might have been adjusting it. Band on his wrist as he came out. He's had a little uh, little pain in that elbow and that forearm uh, for about three weeks. And I think, Joe, all he was doing is just adjusting that little pad you see there on his forearm. Cyclone 46. Taylor with 108 yards now, averaging almost 11 yards per try. Back to throw. Plenty of time. Throws it complete to Katzenstein, his second catch of the year the 35 yard line and again it's Tim Baker on the stop five tackles in a row by the junior strong uh, the free safety from Grundy Center Iowa he's not a big guy either he was a high school quarterback they converted into a uh, defensive back he made eight tackles against Astros look last at year. the replay there Joe he just has all the time in the world and fires it right in there now let's go down to the sideline and Rich Roberts Fellas, you saw Monty Kratzenstein making the catch here Todd Milligan has uh, just a cramp in his left leg should be back in the ballgame a little bit later on First and 10 Huskers, power eye, reverse. Here's Brinson to the 30, to the 25, to the 23. Tom Osborne commented last week that that was one of the frustrating things about this season for him, that he hadn't been able to get Brinson free for a big run. Oftentimes you see him coming around there and you see it on the replay here where Brinson is actually a third back in the backfield. And this one breaks open pretty good. Again, Glazier out in front knocking those little people around, and he picks up good yardage. Bain of the fastest Husker ever, 4-3-7 for his 40. Tim Baker, there's Brinson. Baker made that stop again, and Tim Baker and Mike Shane have had almost all of the tackles for Iowa State. Pitch comes out the clock, knocked out at the 20-yard line. To Richard Bell. And that's, uh, that's one thing that Brinson didn't get done there. Uh, he's very quick, and... Uh, is a real asset to the Nebraska football team, but he's not the greatest blocker in the world, and he didn't quite get the guy off his feet on the corner 
or Bell would have picked up a lot more yardage on that play, Joe. Richard, a very speedy young man, a red shirt in 86. He had some knee surgery that year. Aldadena, California is his home. Second and seven, Nebraska. Pitch comes back, coming outside, and Clark is inside the 20 to about not quite the 17-yard line. Huskers will need to get to the 13 to pick up the first down. Up very close on Kenny Clark, and he gets help up from a cyclone. Jake Rutgers are made to stop, along with Anthony Hoskins, the outside linebacker. See the replay again here, and boy, this just goes over and over again when those big linemen pull out and come on the outside, and they're coming right at our cameraman. And he picks up a great shot there, Joe. Good coverage. Huskers in four-down territory, but it's third and five. The Cyclone 13. Taylor with a handoff to Clark. 15 to the 12. He has got the first down with a yard to spare. And Carruthers, again, the right corner makes the stop. Carruthers was an All-America junior college player in Iowa. He's a number two tackler last year among the defensive backs. 6'2", 194-pounder from Inkster, Michigan. Huskers have a first and 10 about the 12-yard line. Get to the two, they'll pick up the first down. We've got 12 minutes to play third quarter. Nebraska leads it 31 to nothing, and it's a cold, blustery day at Ames if you just got here. Power eye, strong to the right. First and 10 Huskers. Taylor fakes. Bootleg. Now he's going to throw. He's got one man to beat. Throws it in the corner. Touchdown. Nope, didn't even hold it. Pass was there. A diving cry by Brinson, but he couldn't come up with it. Marcus Robertson, the nearest man to it. And you would think Brinson would catch this ball because he had to go down his knees to get it, but it was there. Steve Taylor going across his body while he's moving, and he really put some juice on this ball. You can see he's supposed to roll out here, hold up, and he's looking for guess who, the tight end. That time the tight end didn't clear. He comes back. He does this awful well. Now, he really put some steam on this ball, and it looks like it's right there, and he just drops it. That's all there is to it, Joe. He just dropped it. Very similar move to that Steve made when he got the ball into Milligan for a Husker touchdown. Taylor rolls out. The 10, the 5. Taylor, another touchdown. 37 to nothing. Guess who's going to be Big 8 player of the week this week on offense, Joe? I think we're seeing him right here today. Well, I'll tell you, there's a kid named Sanders that goes against Oklahoma at 3.30 this afternoon that has been having some fantastic days as well. But Steve is certainly a contender. Look at this run. And I tell you what, Joe, if Sanders can do better than Taylor, we'll give it to him, won't we? If he can do that against Oklahoma, all the power in the world to him. Let him go do it. Barrios once again off the hold by Gary Godowski. Through the middle, 38 to nothing, Nebraska with 11.31 to go. We'll be back in a moment, Nebraska and Iowa State from Cyclone Stadium. Huskers lead it 38 to nothing. Live from Cyclone Field, the Huskers. 11 yard scamper by Steve Taylor with 11 seconds to go. <laughs> so fella has got to get some kind of an award for braving it out on a blustery day. Kick into the wind this time. Brennan gets away from Iowa State. Goals out of bounds. Cyclones. Johnson chasing it out of bounds. It'll be their ball, but the field position, even with the wind at your back, is not what the Cyclones want, even if the score weren't. 38-0 against them. No, it isn't. Not to get stopped way down there. And we just showed that shot of our cameraman up on the scoreboard. That's Jim, and I'm telling you, he's the guy that deserves the game ball today, Joe, because that's got to be the toughest position to be. Johnson had no chance to run that one. That would have been the first one I think we had run back today if we got that one. Cyclone spread out all over the field. Henderson is the only back behind Oberg. Wants to throw on the run, has time, throws it to Brown, complete it to 20, out of the 22. Eddie Brown, shoved out by Broderick Thomas. Brown is out of Topeka, Kansas. He was a high school football player only as a senior, 5'10", 180 pounds, transferred up from junior college, and he was all conference there. He's a good one. Tell you wonder why, 38 to nothing, that Walden would wait this long 
to open it up if he indeed is going to open it up. The ball game is over. Now he's going to come out and throw the ball. I don't know why he would wait this long. First down for the Cyclones at the 24-yard line. It's Henderson in motion. Oberg waits, waits, throws it incomplete. Flag goes down, and it looks like it might be pass interference. Joe, that one was called by the fans. <laughs> the official waited and waited and waited, and what it was, there wasn't any bumping going on. It was just screened. Two Nebraska players, Fryer being one of them, had the receiver screened and wouldn't, screened and wouldn't let him come to the inside. And it was a very, very late call. As I say, I think it was called by the, the Iowa State fans. They were booing before the flag came out. 11-19 in the third quarter as Iowa State will pick up the first down at the 39-yard line. The ball was so far ahead, you had to figure it might be a penalty. Here's Jim Walden looking on, his coaching staff behind him from across the way. And the ceiling continues to get a little bit lower, and the snow, I think, may be turning a little more to rain. Very wet on that field. Cyclones first and 10 at their own 38-yard line. Holberg rolls out on the run. Looks, looks, throws it short, complete at midfield. Reggie Cooper makes the stop for the Huskers. Right. Craig Mahoney, the tight end. Make it down as Ross. Ross out of Detroit is their leading receiver. He was a high school quarterback. A lot of times coaches like to recruit high school quarterbacks for the best athlete on the team. And if they can't play the quarterback spot, they can still play someplace well. Two of four, as you see for Oberg. A total of 25 yards, all in this half. 48 of Nebraska. Oberg with only Henderson behind him. Pitches to it. No place to go, and Joe Sims wrestles him down for a loss of about three. Wells also was in on the plane. And boy, has he come along as the last four or five weeks uh, he has really moved up and has played great at that position where Nebraska needed a lot of help, Joe. They needed a lot of help in those down linemen, and Wells has really come along and filled in. See it on the replay here, and this is just not going to go. Iowa State is not going to be able to run the ball against Nebraska, and Sims made a very good play there coming off the ball. A loss of three at second and 13. Cyclones are on 48. This goes with a five-man front. Three flankers to the open side. Fake, they throw short. Henderson can't hold it. Just out of sync there, Joe. It looked like Henderson wanted the ball a lot quicker than he was giving it. So he was just not exactly ready when he got it, kind of bobbled the ball and down. I don't think it was going to pick up a lot of yardage anyway. You want a verification on how tough it is to catch a football on that sideline. Rich Roberts is braving it out on the sideline with our microphone down there, and it is... Just a toss, just the ball boy tossing the, the dry ball of the referee. I think it is a kind of a meritorious catch because it has been getting steadily worse since noontime. Henderson again is the only back behind Ober. Two flankers to the left, one to the right. Henderson up the middle, across midfield, but just barely. Short of the back marker, which means it's going to be more than 10 yards to go. And that's going to send the Iowa State fans out of the stadium, Joe, I guarantee you. Third down, and you run the ball up the middle. Third down and 13, and you run the ball up the middle. Kent Wells and Lawrence Peter on the stop for Nebraska. And Johnston now, with a win behind him, will stand back at his 35 to get it away. Brinson stands on the Huskers' 10. There's a guy that got an 80-yarder off earlier in the ball game with the wind at his back. He's out 41 of the day. High snap, and he's got it. Angling for the out of bounds. Huskers going to let it roll, and it's going to be a good one. They let it go all the way down to the five, hovering all around it, and that wind is going to take it right down to the one. And that was just the wind blowing the ball. Now let's go down to the sideline and Rich Roberts for an injury report. Just talked with Greg Sullivan, the uh, trainer of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. He says he's going to try to keep Todd Milligan out of this game if he can, unless they need him later on here in the second half of the score. The 38 nothing doesn't look like Milligan will be needed. Todd has a hamstring cramp in his left leg, so as I said, George Sullivan would like to keep him out of the game if possible throughout the rest of the ball game. Back up to the booth. His head coach says that's tough because Todd never lets you know when he's hurt. 
Todd was a punter in high school at Shenandoah, and a good one. He has been some kind of a pass receiver. Caught his seventh touchdown pass today. 15 for the year. 9-10 to go third quarter. Huskers 38 to nothing in front. And it's kind of a mixture of rain and snow and gusting winds up to 40. The playing conditions about as bad, I believe, as we've seen in recent seasons. The officials are over around the uh, uh, sideline to see about a scoreboard, Joe. We might be able to grab a timeout here. They called timeout on the uh, field. So we'll take a timeout with Nebraska leading this ball game, 38 to nothing. We'll be right back. Officials got it out and got it in play. Tyrese knocks it eye back, brings it straight ahead out near the four-yard line. A 48-yard punt by Judge Johnston put the Huskers back, and here's Knox on the first play coming out of the end zone. Stopped by outside linebacker Anthony Hoskins. It's second down and seven. Nebraska deep in their own territory, but on top 38 to nothing. Taylor hands off to his fullback, and it's Lewis out for good yardage in the first down near the 15. And this play is going to begin to work, Joe. You really can see when the offensive line is dominating when this play starts to work. It did last week in Missouri, the week before against uh, Kansas State. We have an Iowa State player down on the field who was at the brunt of that block, I think, Joe. One of four fellows who won't be back in their two-deep lineup for the Iowa State Cyclones, Jeff Dole. He's a strong safety. They got Carruthers in the right corner. Outside linebacker Hoskins and Allen Patton in at that left tackle. Otherwise, everybody's either a sophomore or a junior and will be back if they're starting too deep. So better things are ahead for Jim Walden. Hopefully weather-wise, as well as uh, in the fortunes. Iowa State 4-4 four four going into the day. And a tough loss against Colorado after two big eight wins. Power eye. Taylor rolls that way. Cuts to the 20. He might be gone. Midfield when they wrestle him down. Tim Baker once again. He's had a great third quarter. Well, Steve Taylor's making most of what would probably be his last series, Joe. You see it on the replay here. The he rolls out. Lewis gets a good block right at the line of scrimmage. And he thinks, as you said, I thought he was gone here, but he couldn't quite just get past that last guy. And they push him out of bounds at about midfield. That's the kid we were talking about, a high school quarterback who ate tackles against the Huskers last year, Tim Baker. There's a power eye formation, first and ten at midfield. Tyrese Knox off the right side is to near the 44-yard line of the Cyclones. And that rain and snow mix kind of comes in sheets now. There's a citizen up in the end zone at the north end who stands up with a blanket behind him. Looks like the sail on a, on a <laughs> ship in a, in a hurricane every time he stands up. It almost blows him away. But that last run, Joe, I think that is Steve Taylor's best day of the year. That 155 yards rushing is his best day of the year. He's just been outstanding in this ballgame. Got Jerry Godowski in now quarterback spot number 14. Power eye, second and five. Pitch comes back. Knox has not quite got the first down. He's at the 41. They'll need to get just across the 40. Third and about a yard. There's Tyrese. Well, what a story Tyrese Knox uh, is filled in at so many positions when the Nebraska football team needed him at those positions. When we have the injuries at fullback, Tyrese says, sure, fine. I'll go back and play a little bit of fullback for you and did a great job both running the ball and blocking it. And now he comes back and he's playing the eye back position. Don't worry. Be happy. Oscar fans are in spite of the weather. 38 nothing on the scoreboard. Third down on about a yard. Godowski at quarterback. Hands off. And I don't think they made it. Stacked them up right there, Joe, at the line of scrimmage, and they didn't get enough. Now let's see if Nebraska is going to kick it or they're going to go for it. And it looks like they're going to go for it. They're not going to put any uh, any punter in the ball game at this point. They're just going to go out there and go for it. As you see on your screen here, got the same player that was down before, down again. That was Tyrone Davis. He was the backup to Mike Shane. That's Chris Hennigas, the linebacker spot, who made the stop. He wasn't the one who was injured on the play, and... Uh, Davis, a freshman out of Houston, Texas, goes out. 
And the Huskers, fourth and one, are going to go for it. Gregory wide to the right side, eye formation otherwise. Godowski at quarter looks at a seven-man, almost an eight-man front. Flips it back. Kyrie Smocks, I don't believe, made it. He had to get across the line. He was hit by Anthony Hoskins and stopped short. So the Cyclone fans who haven't had that much to cheer about today get a chance to let go. Yeah, this is the most they've had to cheer about since that first drive in the first quarter. And the Cyclone fans that are left, and a lot of them on this side of the field, Joe, not many on the other side of the field, which is a lot colder. But they're really cheering about this, and well, that's good. But if Nebraska would have punted the ball like they were booing and wanting them to do, they wouldn't have had that to cheer about. And there wasn't any advantage in punting the ball. You would only got another maybe 15 yards out of it. First and 10 Cyclones, 6-13 remain. Third quarter, 38 to nothing, Nebraska. Oberg at quarterback with Henderson, the only back behind him. Three wide outs to the open side. He runs that way, looks back, throws back. It is complete to Bush. Comes down the sideline to midfield, and he may have the first down. He's very close. Tim Jackson makes the stop. Well, Oscar, uh, safety play. man. Very well-conceived play there, Joe. A roll to the opposite side. As you see on the replay here, he rolls to the opposite side. He looks like he's going to run that way. All of a sudden stops and throws back, and they really have this thing set up. I mean, it, it should have picked up more yardage, but the blockers downfield didn't pick up the two Nebraska defenders that were there. They almost picked up the first down, though. Good hit by Tim Jackson. Tim is a transfer out of Kansas State. Came to Nebraska. Now, again, it's Henderson, the only back behind. Second and less than a yard. Henderson's got the first down. So the Cyclones pick it up. Jeff Mills makes the stop, but he's at the 47-yard line of Nebraska. 524 remains third quarter. There's Mills out of Montclair, New Jersey. 220-63, a junior. Henderson stats. He's had two yards average per day, and his long run has been seven. As you said before, Joe, he had almost had four 100 yards rushing coming into this ballgame, so the Nebraska defensive line and linebackers has really held him down. Got a timeout here. I don't know. Iowa State takes the timeout. 5.09 to go third quarter. We'll be right back live to Williams, Iowa. Nebraska and Iowa State to score. Huskers 38, Cyclones nothing. There's a lot of reasons why we came to Sizzler for all-you-can-eat shrimp. The shrimp are really good. All-you-can-eat. And you get a thick sirloin steak with shrimp. All-you-can-eat. And it's a great deal. All you can eat. Now you can get steak and all the golden, crunchy fried shrimp you can eat for a shrimp of a price at the steak, seafood, salad. Are you going to eat that? Sizzler. Introducing Barefoot Comfort from Carrier. Standard heating and air conditioning announces the new Carrier High Efficiency Infinity Gas Furnace built for the 1990s, available from Standard today. For prompt professional installation and service you can count on, Standard's factory trained servicemen have earned a reputation second to none. We do the job right the first time. Buy Carrier from Standard now and get a cash back rebate. Barefoot Comfort from Carrier and Natural Gas. Call Standard today. Wintry type afternoon, Cyclone Stadium. Cyclones with the ball first and ten at the Nebraska 48. Oberg at quarterback, Henderson the only back behind him. Fakes, runs outside to the 45, maybe the 44. Run out of bounds by Mark Blazik and Bruce Pickens. I tell you, the Nebraska or the Iowa State fullback just got flattened there on that fake, Joe. I mean, he just got bowled over as they picked up four. It was that uh, uh, Thomas who just absolutely knocked him right out of his shoes. We got a couple of uh, hardy Iowa State fans, Joe, right down below us. And because Iowa State had crossed the 50-yard line, they opened up the champagne. Everybody Truth. take tomorrow off. Huh? <laughs> opened up the champagne, and they're toasting it right down below us. That's Brown and Glopfeld is the two wide outs top of your screen. Warren is in as the only back right now behind Oberg. Henderson out for the moment. 
Under pressure, over tries to roll out, can't get away from Mike Kroll. Number 88, there he is. Sudbury, Massachusetts. He's a New England 100 meter champion. Great speed for right outside linebacker or defensive end, if you want to call him that. Well, he's a real comer here. We're going to be isolated on ETN as he blitzes up the middle, and then you see it from the outside. Kroll's got him and wrestling down. This guy is really coming on too, Joe, and this is going to be a player that next year and the year after we're going to see a lot of. Again, it's Brown going wide to the far side, and Glotfeldy comes out to the near side. Henderson is back in. Oberg wants to throw, gets chased by Broderick, hits the deck, and Broderick's right there. Well, Broderick will get a, uh, a sack credited to him, but I think mostly what he got there was a scare. Broderick was just coming at him so hard, he went right down. Feet slipped out from under him, and down he went. But Broderick will get uh, the credit for the sack. Broderick runs a 40 and 4.76. She's 6'3", 2.5. Amazing speed for a big guy. He is, I think we've mentioned before, is a nephew of Mike Singletary, who is one of the most fun guys to watch if you're a Chicago Bear fan in that secondary. Johnston will stand back at his 26, fourth and 23 for the Cyclones. Brinson is back at his 15. There's Dana. Good snap. Monstrous kick, and this is going to carry into the end zone. Well, Johnston jabbed his fist into his palm. There you get a little idea, but snow is only snow in the air. As soon as it hits the ground, it becomes very wet in that field. 3.20 to go, 38-0 Huskers, and that was a 60-yard punt. <laughs> There's the fellas that we're, we're going to have special services for right after the ball game. That's right. Look at his lens there, Joe. What he's been catching into his face also is what you saw there. You see the people huddled up against the side, the lee side of the stands. It's something. After the touchback, here come the Huskers. Gadowski in the middle to Lance Lewis for, what, a couple of games? No, a fumble on the play. Let's look at it again. Cyclones run it out, but they're going to be their ball, and I believe around the 20-yard line. Lewis coughing up the football. Here we go on the replay, Joe, and you see hand him off right in the middle. It looks like he's down, but evidently the ball popped out of there. Yeah, it definitely popped out. He doesn't know where it is. And they pick it up. Must have hit the ground. It's one of those type calls, Joe, where the officials, I don't think, really know what happened inside of that pile, whether the ball was down or not, but they marked it down on the 20 and gives Iowa State its deepest penetration since the first quarter and a chance here. That's like Randy Byrne, the right end, number 75, might have knocked it loose. Here comes over it back to throw. And he scrambled a little bit. Now throws toward the end zone. It's incomplete. No flags. Headed for Eddie Brown, but Eddie wasn't very close to it. One of those situations, show where the wide receiver had fallen down. It is very slick down there on that field right now. And if you try to make a cut out of the wide receiver position, it's very difficult to hold your feet. He slipped down, so the quarterback just lofted it in the end zone where there was nobody throwing it away. Mark Blazek of Valparaiso, Nebraska, was the nearest guy to him, number 23. Oberg, three of six now for 34. Second and 10. Just outside the 20-yard line of Nebraska. That's Henderson in motion. Hand off to Warren, and he is just snowed under. Curtis Warren... No place to go as Pat Tyrantz was the first guy there. Tyrantz was a red shirt last year out of Omaha, Millard North. 6'2 and 230. Sophomore. Also in on that play was number 95, Broomgard. And those two people, you have two former starters. So when you bring people off the bench into this setup, you've got two former starters who are very good players out there. Denny Ross, top of your screen, third and 15, Husker 25 for the Cyclones. Henderson in motion toward Ross. Oberg straightens up, wants to throw, goes over the middle, off the helmet of Fryer. Charles face guarding as Ross on the look-in pass was a target and it bounced off Fryer's helmet. Incomplete and brings up fourth and 15. And we see it on the replay here as it hits Fryer, as you said, Joe, right in the helmet. Now, that would have been face guarding had he been waving his hands up in the air. But he was just screening is all he was doing. Field goal attempt here, Joe. 
Jim Walden wants not to be shut out. But Shudak from an angle. This would be about a 41-yard attempt with the wind at his back. Up. It is good. So Shudak continues. He has not missed an extra point this year. He's hit 8 of 13 field goals. His longest was 55. He had two almost 50 against Colorado. And this one is through, and it's 38 to 3. So the Cyclones, with 2.22 to go in the third quarter on the scoreboard. We'll be right back live at Ames, Iowa, with Nebraska and Iowa State. And the score, 2.22 to go third period. Huskers lead it 38 to 3. A lot of places will cut you a deal on the price of two pizzas. But what usually gets cut is the amount of cheese and the toppings. But at Pizza Hut, you get two medium hand-tossed traditional pizzas loaded with two layers of cheese, just $9.99. Pile on your favorite toppings. At Pizza Hut, we always cut you a great deal. So why get their skimpy pizzas when you can get great pairs from Pizza Hut delivered? Pizza Hut, making it great. Whisper what words can never say. Whisper I love you with flowers from Janicek Florist and Greenhouse, 49th and Charles at Saddle Creek. Phone 556-5652. Five, five, six, five, six, five, field goal puts a lot of foot into this one it'll carry out of the end zone that touch back and come out to the 20-yard line that's where it was when the huskers lost it iowa state in three tries lost five yards but shudak with a 42-yard field goal put him on the scoreboard for the first time 38 to 3. i'll tell you that is the fourth fumble of the day but only the first turnover and on a day like today i think that's kind of remarkable it really is you think you would see a lot more turnovers but of course both teams have been fairly conservative in what they were doing so far. Jerry Godowski with Lance Lewis and Tyrese Knox behind him in the eye. Runs the option to the 20, pitches out, Knox has got it. And he is flies all over the place as he goes out around the 31-yard line. I think, Joe, the way those flags were thrown there, now it couldn't have been a late hit, so I, uh, I was thinking maybe it was a late hit. We'll see here coming out was it a holding a holding against nebraska but this guy gadowski is absolutely great at that i mean he holds the ball right to the last moment pitches it out and as you saw the play went by there i think you saw the hold as you went by it looked like somebody reached out and got a defender's ankle and there's tom osborne talking it over with brinson among others garrett is there that tom's got to get himself a snowsuit here i mean i feel sorry for him out there freezing with no hat on and uh, I'm sure he doesn't have long underwear either. You know, he's just one of those guys that leads by example. If he can stay out there, everybody else can stay out there. Number 14, Jerry Godowski has got the best passing percentage of all the Husker quarterbacks, 5 of 7, 71%. Fourth penalty for the Huskers, a total of 45 yards. Iowa State's penalized twice for 10. First and 20 now as they move the ball back to the 10. Godowski on the play, apparently not off in time. Not ahead of the... Uh, the tackle on this side of the line, Joe, moved, and Nebraska will get another five-yard penalty. Huskers now trying to get some people in that haven't had that much playing time. He moved, Joe, uh, but moved. Number 78 moved a little bit early, and uh, Nebraska will get five yards tacked on there. In a tight end is Chris Garrett out of Snyder, Texas, 6 3 and 2 and a quarter. Number 80. Milligan will not be back. Kratzenstein caught his second touchdown, or his second catch of the year this year and Garrett listed the number four man of the tight end spot with 214 to go now it's first and 25 for Nebraska back at their five Godowski option play left couple of yards well played defensively by the Cyclones Ray Carruthers the right cornerback stood there wrestled him down 
We've got a report from the sideline. Rich Roberts. Rich? Jeff Shudak, the young man from Council Bluff St. Albert, who uh, just put the Cyclones on the board with that field goal. 28 out of 38 last year in field goal, or rather in his career, 28 for 38. All big eight last year, 77 points out in a fine year. He's a red shirt sophomore. Let's go back up to the booth. It's 38 to 3, and here come the Huskers needing 23 yards to pick up the first down. The ball is at about their own seven. Katzenstein comes from right to left. Kodowski hands off to his fullback, and Lewis grabs at the eight yard line. Can't do any further than that. A lot of Cyclones led by number 90, the right end, Dan Daly, out of Hudson, Wisconsin. That's him, number 90. With a minute and 12 and the clock running. Well, I don't think anybody too unhappy that it is because it has been a thoroughly weather-wise miserable day for Cyclone fans. 38 to 3 on the scoreboard. That kind of completes it for them. That's right, Joe. Walden said early on in the week if he had his way, he would call it off. I'll tell you right now, I tend to agree with him. That was Look even at, before the weather factor. Huh? There's, there's one hearty the soul. <laughs> Huskers third and 22 from the eight yard line. It's Bell in motion. Godowski runs, goes to the 10, the 20, the 30, cuts back. He's got a helper. Oh, get caught at the midfield stripe and knocked down at the 46. He had one blocker out in front of him. But chasing just the one play. more step, Joe, just one more step. Had he been able to get across the field like he was trying to do, he would have been able to pick up that blocker, and that blocker would have knocked down the last guy that had a chance. You see right here, good run here, good move right there. Great move, got to the outside, pretty good block there, and he goes downfield. Now if he'd have just been able to get by that guy who grabbed him by the shirt, he would have got to the blocker over there, uh, Ba, and he'd have been able to break it all the way. That would have been quite a run. Adam Beck dragged him down. That was Nate Turner that threw that block up about the 40-yard line. Let him make the turn and come back over the midfield mark. So Godowski, who runs that option as well as anybody, he's a 6'195 pound junior out of Fremont. Call a timeout here. We're going to keep it right here. There's only eight seconds left to go in the quarter and uh, just a little bit of confusion evidently on what was called. Uh, Jerry Godowski there with uh, uh, a lot of rushes for the season, of course. 15 rushes for 146 yards, averaging almost 10 yards. And the reason he averages that, Joe, is because he's so darn good at that pitch, at that option. He carries that thing out there so many times and pitches it right at the last minute and sucks in that cornerback. Eventually, they start saying, oh, no, no, you're not going to do that to me again. And he doesn't pitch the ball. He holds it and goes on downfield. So he's about as good as I've seen in a long time at that pitch. No surprise that the people in the Fremont area, they've been watching him through his high school career when he was All-State in both football and basketball. He was a Nebraska High School Athlete of the Year in 1986. Jerry Godowski. Here comes Turner. Bottom of your screen is the wide out to the left, the open field side. Only eight seconds remaining in this third quarter. Huskers first and ten after Godowski's sparkling run. Garrett going to the opposite side. Kodowski double reverse. Tyrese gives it to Richard Bell. Bell at the 45, still on his feet, down to the 42. Not quite the first down, and the third quarter has just become history. Dean Ehlers made the stop, the defensive left end for the Cyclone. So after three periods of play, the snow gets snowier, the wind gets colder and stronger. And the Huskers, after three periods, lead it 38 to 3. Oddsmakers made the Huskers 28-point favorites. They've improved on that 38 to 3, Dan. They really have, Joe, and uh, for all you guys that are out there watching, thinking about going to the Oklahoma Oklahoma State ball game, stay with us for a while longer. I guarantee you they're not going to score in the first quarter. Coming outside is Tyrese Knox. He's at the 30. Good diving tackle. Oh, he was gone. Jeff Dole took him out at the knees, and Tyrese is a tough guy to bring down that way. Very powerful upper body on this young man. 
starting to stick, that is, the snow, as you can see on the field, as Tyrese comes to the outside, and you're exactly right, he almost broke this thing. The one guy, whoa, boy, that, that almost was a clip there late, but he almost broke it. That's Marcus Robinson. Robertson is primarily the punt run back guy. Made the stop with Dole chasing first and ten. Huskers up the 26-yard line of the Cyclones. Hand off to Bell on the wing back around. To the 20. To the 15. Runs over the last defender and takes it down to the one. And that's Tim Baker who has had some bad a half for the Cyclones on a tough day for the defense which has been on the field an awful lot of the time. Here it is. Boy, and he really wanted to get in there, too. And again, talk about maybe it's catching, setting up blockers. Watch him setting up his blockers here. Takes the block, gets the last very good block on the outside there. Goes out, gets around, and then he rams into this guy and almost gets it into the end zone. Number 77 is Terry Iman out of Omaha. Brian at right tackle, the backup to Doug Glazer. There's Bell's numbers. Lewis is in at fullback now. Tyrese knocks at eye back. Straight ahead, Godowski jumps in. Did he make it? Yep. Second touchdown of the year for Jerry Godowski. Well, the Huskers are well over 550 yards total offense today. 460 more than that on the ground now with that play. And only 54 seconds into the fourth and final quarter, they've jumped it to 44-3. And now Drennan is going to be the guy that tries the extra point. Berrios had made them all up till now. They're both left-footed soccer-style kickers, and Godowski will stay on the hole. And of course, these are the only two kickers they brought today uh, were uh, Berrios and Drennan. And Drennan puts it up, puts it through. So everything that, uh, every attempt, I guess, has been through both ways today. Huskies go out a little further. 14 minutes plus to go, 45 to 3. We'll be right back live to Ames, Iowa, Nebraska, and Iowa State. Huskers on top, 45 to 3. Through three quarters, Huskers with 461 yards on the ground, 71 in the air, 532 total. Cyclones 32 on the ground, 38 in the air, and all of those in the third period, a total of 70 yards. First downs, Nebraska led it 26 to 7. And now less than a minute into the fourth grade, Huskers are on the scoreboard, leading 45 to 3. Godowski climaxing a seven-play drive with a dive in from the one-yard line after it was set up by a 25-yard run by Richard Bell. Barrios boots it this time to the five. They're going to bring it back. Johnson out to the 20 on his feet for just for a moment. Spun out of one tackle and ran into more trouble. Yes, uh, as you say, Godowski going into the end zone, he's the guy that deserved that touchdown after that marvelous 45-yard run he had to get him out of the hole and set it up, and Nebraska drives it 80 yards. Actually, after those penalties, they were back about 95 yards to do it. Godowski scoring from one yard out. Ready to go. The Cyclones down by 42 points now. They've got Derek DeGenero in for the first time, number 19. He's been the guy on punts only. Straightens up, wants to throw it. He's a senior, comes out to the 22. He's grabbed by Pat Tarrance, the weak side linebacker. Uh, he had a lot of playing time against Nebraska last year, of course, uh, in that ball game, and has been uh, played some for him this year, but has been moved down uh, because of overt success. He had a knee injury that's been recurring. He was 8 out of 14 in the air against the Huskers a year ago. He's a 6'4", 210-pounder out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, number 19. De Gennaro, first guy to run a play since Oberg, who started the ball game and played everyone up till now. Two wideouts, open field side for the Cyclones. De Gennaro looks them over. On the draw, comes to his fullback up the middle, and Sylvester Nickerson in for his first time. He's got the first down. Nickerson is a junior from Miami, Florida. At six foot and 207 pounds. So Jim Walden elected to give some of his reserves a little playing time here with 13 minutes still to go in the ball game. Get those fresh guys in the game. They're all fired up, a little pushing and shoving. Joe, you saw at the end of the play there, but the officials choosing not to throw the flag, which is wise for everybody, of course. A uh, good run there, though, by the fresh legs. First down out of the 30 yard line. Cyclones on their own 30. Number four with his back to you is Nickerson. 
comes from Miami, and he was third in the state finals with 100-yard dash. He's got some speed. First and 10 Cyclones. Again, the handoff, again to Nickerson, and this time maybe yard, two yards in the middle. A lot of white jerseys. Tom Osborne, I think, has put the people that haven't been in up to now. Randall Jobman, the guy that normally backs up Leroy Adrian at the strong side, out of Lisco, Nebraska, in for part of the stop there, 6 3 and 230 pounder. He'll inherit that job if he can hold it next year. He's a junior. Adrian will be gone through graduation along with much of the deep secondary. Fryer and Walker and Jackson and Custard and Hicks and Blazek, all seniors. 12 minutes. In motion to the outside is Thibodeau. They throw to him, drops the ball. He's the number three running back behind Warren and Peterson. Thibodeau is out of Chicago, has one catch this year and almost had two. Joe, as you see, uh, saw in the shot before that, that the stands in some areas are almost empty. I uh, understand we got a call in the press box from a couple of local bars in Ames wondering where the signal was on what on the satellite. I think those guys are kind of gotten a crowd in there that said if they can't pirate the signal off the satellite, and they're probably watching it very comfortable in the bar, so hats off to you guys. Pivado is the deep back, number 31. He was the player of the year in Chicago Catholic Leagues. He gets a pitch out, goes to the right side, cuts back to the 40. He may be gone. A foot race. The 10, he's there. Paul Thibodeau, junior from Chicago, showed you why he drew some enough votes to make him the player of the year in Chicago's Catholic Leagues. Got into a foot race that he won. The guy chasing him was Lorenzo Hicks. Lorenzo's been bothered a little bit with an injury, but Thibodeau's got great speed, and just the Cyclones as you, get their first touchdown. Just as you can see on the replay here, just gets outside, gets a couple of good key blocks there, and splits about five Nebraska players. And as you said, Joe, Lorenzo has no chance to catch him with all these injuries, and he goes in, shows a lot of speed, good running there. What is this? Oh, they're going to try double extra point. Okay. Now Cyclones go into it. Now they're going to shift back in. They had it spread out. Now they shift back in the shoe deck. Apparently he's going to try it. Tim Walden will show you a lot of scenes and then come up with something unexpected. But this one's up. And he's had, in his career, 33 straight. He's 16 for 16 on the year. 35-point margin. We'll be right back live to Ames, Iowa, Nebraska and Iowa State. 11.50 to go in the ballgame. Huskers on top, 45 to 10. Everybody in the county looking for the onside kick. The Huskers have five men up close. The Cyclones huddled around. They're kicking from the hash mark in from the right side, as you see. Now they're going to spread out a little bit. Nebraska drops back a little bit. They're going to boot it deep. Waiting for it. Back at the 18-yard line. Huskers bring it back to the 25, the 30, the 35. Dana Brinson. Over the 35 to about the 38. Jim Walden loves to show you a lot of pictures. He was a mighty good quarterback. Player of the year, as we said earlier, for Bob Devaney when Bob was coaching at the University of Wyoming. Dave Ader made the stop that time, and Godowski is in again for the quarterback series with 11.44 to go. Huskers now with the wind at their back. Richard Bell comes wide to the right side. Harry Stocks and Lance Lewis at eye back and fullback behind Godowski. Knox. Shakes off two, and he can't get rid of everybody. Knocked out of bounds at the 37, loss about a yard. The only thing bad about that run, Joe, is that he was knocked out of bounds. That's the only bad thing we said there. But Iowa State's playing a little more vigor here. That touchdown kind of fired him up, and their defense really came strong on that one and uh, pushed the Nebraska blockers back, and Tyrese had no place to go. This is Dave Ader. He's a junior from Elgin, Illinois. He was a walk-on who earned a scholarship for 22 at the right corner, and Tyrese would never got a chance to fill up ahead of steam. Second and 11, Huskers. In motion, 
coming back inside as Knox, the flag flies, and Knox comes up to around the 39-yard line. Huskers had Jamie Warden from the wingbacks back coming in motion. The flag flew very quickly. The tackle by Dean Ehlers. Got a hold on Nebraska there, that guy that broke through the line, Joe, and, and I couldn't see exactly who it was, but one of the defensive linemen broke through, and they just had to hold him to keep him from taking the handoff that was through so quickly. There's our shot from the end zone camera, where you can see that. See it here, Joe, with a guy just swim motion goes right through, and he is being held, being held, being tackled, is what he's been doing. He didn't watch the coach to, to see that that was his man when they show the film uh, Sunday and Monday. Good move, that boy. He really came off the ball quickly, zipped right on in there. Oscars have Chip Bowen at split in now, and Chris Bryant is at the tight end spot. So I think everybody who made the trip to Ames has seen some action today, and the snow accumulating a little bit on the field. It's second and 21. Kodowski with a fake. 35-yard line before he shoved out of bounds. Right in front of the Husker bench. They would need to get to the 48-yard line to pick up the first down. Dave Ader again for the Cyclones, number 22, pushing him out as Tom Osborne going to send in the play. Godowski over talking to him since the play ended there, and that's Gregory and Bell going in. That was Doug Edwards a while ago, number 43, that made the good move that Nebraska had to tackle him here. Godowski averaging better than 18 yards on the long run of 46. Three tries. 11.07 remain on the ball game. Huskers lead it by 35 points. Godowski fakes, runs, now stops, wants to throw, does, but it's incomplete. That was Morgan Gregory who had stopped and trying to come back, but Godowski, about the time he was hit, let it go, and it was nowhere near where Gregory could get to catch it. Don Edwards had the pressure on Godowski. We've got about uh, four or 500 fans right down in front of us here in front of the press box, and they're all Iowa State fans, and I think they're cheering themselves as much as they're cheering the Iowa State team. They're cheering themselves for being able to stay. Right there they are, Joe, and they've been raising holy heck for a little while. That gal looks like She's dressed for it with all the fur on. Fourth and 14, Huskers will boot. Stroker gets it away with the wind at his back, drops it around the 30, goes right on by, and John's going to get himself a big kick, and the Huskers now going to put the Cyclones in tough position inside their five-yard line. Now they top it. They jump on it at the five. Marcus Robertson had that one go on by and then elected not to try to recapture it. A 60-yard punt. That's the longest of the year for John. And so Iowa State with the win in their face and down 45 to 10 with 10.49 to go will take over the football. There's the Husker bench. And again, most of the reserves who haven't seen that much action are going to get to finish it up in a mini blizzard at Ames, Iowa. See the total yardage there, Joe, and the Cyclones are still way down in the total yardage. But to have the football back and this hungry bunch of second stringers on the field again. It was a 67-yard touchdown run that made that stat go up. Coming up the middle, Nickerson comes out to around the 10-yard line, a gain of about five. It'll be second and five. Randall Jobman, strong side linebacker. There's the Nebraska bench, and those guys are covered up. Joe trying to stay warm, all sitting down, huddled up. Keep the ball between the white lines and let the clock run. 10.21 to go. This again is De Janeiro in his second series. Pitching it outside. Paul Thibodeau gets across the 10 to around the 11, 12 yard line. Three yards short of the first down. We're under 10 minutes left in the ball game. That's John Marco, number 93, who made the stop. John out of Bellevue, 6'1 and 220. He's a senior. Boy, that left side linebacker core is going to be wiped out by graduation. Brad Thomas, John Marco, and Kurt Brewer are all seniors. Joe, this is the time of the ball game where you're sitting on the bench. You don't know whether you want the coach to put you in the ball game or not. Looking in behind De Janeiro, third and three for the Cyclones, the 12-yard line. Somebody may have moved if they didn't. The Huskers going to draw five. It looks like they were pretty confident that was John Marco that jumped across. Marco says he moved, but uh, 
and that was the case. He most certainly did, and Marco jumped across and hit him, and that's exactly what you're supposed to do. As soon as that guy moves, point to the official and jump back. Look at this, Joe. <laughs> These guys have got cellophane over them so they can see out. I see I have one face looking through. This is Those are Nebraska fans that are underneath that thing. That's determination. The issue has not been adopted for some time. We were 31 nothing last year at halftime, 9.22 to go fourth quarter. Nickerson is the only back behind DeGenero. Now he's in motion to the outside. Nobody's back there. He throws it. DeGenero's got it. Good move. Gets him out to the 10 to around the 13-yard line before again Randall Jobman out of Lisco, Nebraska brings him down. Short of the first down. That Nickerson's quite a back. I mean, either running the ball, and that time they throw it out to him out there in the flat, and he picked up a few yardage. That's uh, quite an impressive back they've got there, Joe. He's out of Florida, out of Miami, and they're saying more and more. It used to be that Texas and California was a hotbed for recruiting. Now they've found out that some outstanding athletes come back, come out of Florida. They're going to have to kick it away, though, now, Joe. Morgan Gregory is standing back around the Iowa State 48-yard line as Johnston will stand on his goal line to kick into the wind. Good snap from center. Low driving kick away from Gregory, and Morgan's going to let it bounce. It's not a bad bounce into the wind and a very good kick. Iowa State, they're looking around for something to be kind of happy about today. Has to, they've had a lot of opportunities to punt, but they have generally done a pretty good job, especially into the wind. That's a 44-yarder. I think there have been some wiggle win today that haven't gone that far. 8.09 to go. 45-10 Huskers take over. And for the first time, Mickey Joseph, freshman from Marrero, Louisiana, is in. Really, Joe, the main reason they've been able to get that yardage on the punts is because the guys back to receive them just are not taking any chances of picking them off unless it comes right to them. Leotis Flowers at I back behind Joseph. Two freshmen. That's Flowers in his first carry, and he's up around midfield, a gain of about seven. And this is about what you're going to see from here on in for Tom Osborne, is a lot of stuff up the middle. Uh, he'll run the fullback, he'll run the eye back. I don't think you'll see him do anything else unless, of course, Mr. Excitement, Mickey Joseph, decides to check off at the line of scrimmage or skip out on his own. See a good block at the line of scrimmage there, and he just picks up a few yards by running over a few people at the end of that run. This Leotis has averaged about seven yards every time he touched the ball. That was his 30th carry of the year, and now the Huskers go offside. Jumping off is Chris Garrett in the tight end spot. He set him back five and stopped the clock with 7.33 to go. Well, Nebraska will come home to play their final home game of the year against Colorado. And those of you who looked in when Colorado played Oklahoma saw a heck of a ball game out in Boulder that Colorado very nearly won. It was tied near the end, and Oklahoma got the field goal to win it by three. Here's Leotis and some of the numbers on him. His 30th carry. Average about six and a half yards per try. He's got one TD. He's at the eye back spot now. Joseph going to fade, going to wanted to throw. He can run. Comes up over the 50 to about the 47 of Iowa State. And Mickey Joseph, highly recruited freshman out of Marrero, Louisiana, and Jeff Bauer running down. There's Mick. Mickey puts his head down on the last uh, little drive there. Probably picked up the first uh, yardage. The yardage he needed for the first down. We see it here. And there's a penalty also, Joe. I think somebody grabbed a face mask as they were bringing him down. Uh, we're going to be able to pick it up, I'm sure, here on the slow motion replay. Yep. Had his hand right in there at the end. Nice pickup there by the camera guys in the slow motion. Morgan Gregory goes off to the left side out of your picture as a wide out to the left. That's Joseph up close. First and 10, 42-yard line of Iowa State. On the run, grab from behind, runs out from under it. Keeps on going. Mickey knocked out of bounds finally inside the 30. Take a look at this one and count the number of hands grabbing it as he turned the corner. We've called him all year long Mr. Excitement, and he really is. He can get things going. He moves around the outside, and uh, several people. Look at him on the ground camera here. There's one guy that's got a hand on him. And we come on out here again, and another guy tries to hand tackle him. He gets out of that. Mr. Swivel hips just keeps on going, and finally the third guy does get a leg and gets him uh, out of bounds, Joe. Third guy was out of back, the free safety. 
He's a sophomore out of Alexandria, Virginia. Jim Walden's gone coast to coast and border to border recruiting, it looks like. Coming outside this time is Leotis Flowers, and he maybe made a yard or two. He's just short of the 25. With 6.43 to go, if you just got here, Huskers led 31-0 at halftime. Iowa State got their points in the third quarter on a field goal and a long touchdown run, 67 yards to make it 45 to 10, and that's where it stayed. And that 67 yards shows about half of their total offense for the ball game also on that one play. Second and nine, Joseph. One back behind him. Back to throw, runs a draw. Outside, you gotta hurry to catch him if you're gonna get him out there, and they did. Cyclone came on, and it was Dave Ader who was not gonna be, had his corner turned from that right corner spot who made the stop. Good hard tackle there, Joe. He really came up quickly and put a shoulder to him in and put him down, and that's very hard to do to get that angle on Mickey Joseph. We see on the replay here, Mickey goes back like he maybe he's going to throw the ball, but we know he really isn't. It's just a quarterback draw. Could have been a head slap there as the guy went by him, but there's the good tackle as he just put him down to the ground. See it again here. Really got a hard tackle, hard smack in there. Third down and nine. Huskers with a big third down play. Joseph runs the option, turns the corner, got the first down, the five, inside the five to about the three. Mickey and the thing that he does so well, he may scoot around three or four times, but pretty soon let him turn up field with some speed. Jeff Bauer saved the touchdown for the Cyclones, a strong safety number eight. Here's another guy, Joe, that really spends a lot of time in the weight room. My son, Mark Livingston, is in there a lot, too. And he says he sees Mickey in there almost every afternoon. So Mickey spends a lot of time in that weight room trying to build up at what is kind of a slender body right now. He's 5'10 and 170. Here's the power eye. Hand off. Leotis has got the touchdown. Leotis flowers over the left side. And the Oscars put one more on the board with 5.09 to go in the ball game. And Joe, that looks like it's going to send the rest of our Iowa State fans on this side of the field backing for maybe that uh, that pub downtown. Look at the Nebraska. We're going to see here the replay just straight up the middle. Good blocking at the point of attack. See a good block there by the fullback. Carries him all the way on into the end zone. Lewis had a good block that drove on downfield, and all Flowers had to do was just follow him right on in. Here's Brennan to try it off of Godowski's hold. 51-10. Kidowski is going to have to scramble, throws it up in the air, knocked away, and it's the first extra point of the first any kind of a kick, and actually Drennan never got a chance that time. Kidowski didn't feel like he had a handle on the football and tried to scramble and lost it. Nobody was underneath it. So with 5.09 to go, it stays 51-10. to 10. And we'll be right back, Joe, with more action from Nebraska-Iowa State after these messages with the Nebraska lead, 51-10. to 10. Kick up coming. Let's check quickly with Rich Roberts at the sidelines. A lot of the fans still here, at least the Nebraska fans are still here, I should say. Here's a guy here who's uh, looking forward to the shutout of a couple of weeks. Breaking bones making Switzer, Switzer stew. Looking forward to the big game down in Norman in a few weeks. There's a kick that carries to Johnson back around the 10. Gets out and may have been bumped by his own man as he crossed the 25. Ron Wilkinson was there with him and he falls ahead to about the 28. Let's look and see. Replay on the touchdown here, Joe, and what you can see here at the line of attack, as I said, but look at Lewis all the way into the end zone with his block there, and all Flowers had to do was just follow him in. Very good blocking at all three of the Nebraska fullbacks. Uh, they're very adept at doing it, and Lewis is going to be a guy that's going to be around for a long time, true freshman. Doug DeGennaro stays on at quarterback number 19. In motion is Ed Brown. Hand off up the middle, and it is Gary Peterson. Gary is a Grand Island, Nebraska freshman. His first carry of the ball game. Junior Monera is the middle guard, made the stop for the Huskers. So a lot of fellas and uh, both sides that have not seen action are in there for the final five minutes, which is now down to four minutes and 40 seconds of playing time. Huskers 51 to 10. Have Colorado next week. Iowa State.
will have some healing to do before they get back in the Big 8 action next week. The pitch comes back. Coming outside Wilkinson at the 35-36 yard line. Ron Wilkinson is a freshman from Los Angeles who made all city in Los Angeles, and that takes a little to it. And he was almost stopped by a flying plastic blag before the, uh, the tacklers got him there. It's uh, really something. Colorado knocks off Missouri 45 to 8. So Tigers may still be reeling from last week. That's third quarter? Fourth quarter. Fourth quarter is still in the fourth quarter. They're still going. Third and two. Cyclones behind De Janeiro. Now I formation this time, and that's Brown in motion. They got the flags fly. They've got enough for the first down. Let's see what the flags are about. It's Gary Peterson again. You have to think that was going to be holding Joe in that uh, area that they threw that flag, but we'll see. What I can't figure out is why you would throw a flag at all <laughs> right now, but they did, and it was holding, Joe. Holding against Iowa State. Peterson is a 6'295 pounder who was an all-stater by both the Omaha World Herald and the Lincoln Journal star. Played for Kenny Fisher out there. Had nine letters in high school. Football and track and basketball. And it's Peterson right now who's still on the ground. It looked like one of those things, Joe, where he might have got the ball directly underneath him when he hit the ground. And they're working right in that midsection area, and I bet that's what it is. And uh, we've been, as Rich Roberts talked about before, that uh, that football has to be a hard item right now. And to fall on it, especially with a point up at you, might be falling like falling on a big rock right now. Folks in Grand Island got to know that it was football and it was track and it was wrestling. He was a 190-pound state champion in 88. High school wrestling, so he's a pretty tough kid. He can take some hits. Our thanks to these folks. Dan Livingston right up here. Cowardly inside the booth. There are camera crew, including the folks that are perched on top of the scoreboard in the mini blizzard. Give them a hand, Joe. Computer graphics and the audio from Lee Lawford. Thank you, Greg, and thank you, Mark. Thank Lawford. It has been a tough day to be inside with the windows open or especially outside. And to Rich Roberts on the sideline, who braved it out, I don't think, with a hat on all day, is Dr. Tom Osborne. Sports Video Productions of 1988 has been happy to bring this into you. I'm glad you could, some of you at least, stay home and take a look at it, because today was not the day you wanted to be out either on the highways or in the stands at Ames, Iowa, and I presume all over the Channel 3 area. Most certainly, Joe. Janeiro on the draw play gives it to Nickerson comes across the 35 to almost the 40 yard line Joe I'd like to thank one other group of people as the people have sent home hopefully with the fire going maybe something liquid in their hand to watch this ball game the guys that really deserve a pat on the back are all those guys that are advertised in this ball game all the people but those commercials you saw go by, we really need their support, and we've gotten into this particular instance to bring Nebraska football to you, whether it be a home or away. First and 10, Iowa State, just short of their own 40-yard line. They've got Johnson in motion to the outside. They throw it out there, it is complete. It's Wilkinson, and he is knocked out of bounds. Wilkinson, number 32, knocked out by Mark Peggy. And the Creighton prep. Prepster from Omaha, running at the strong side linebacker spot. And some of those numbers are getting a little bit tough to see. And as you can see, the snow is accumulating on the field. There's Iowa State. The offensive coordinator sending in the signals. We're down to 2.54 to go. And you mentioned Creighton Prep and Mark Haggy there. Creighton Prep will be going for their fourth consecutive uh, championship. And, Joe, you and I will be working that ball game later, as they say, on a, another channel. Second and four for the Cyclones. 46 yard line. Running for his life, De Janeiro wants to throw it, does throw it incomplete. 
Mike Bush was the guy that was about five yards in front of him. And probably the smartest thing that he did was not catch the football. It might have been a little bit more of a loss than the incomplete. Dan Svela and Pat Terrance were the two guys doing the chasing. Svela is that right outside linebacker out of Clarkson, Nebraska. Terrance, of course, out of Miller North. Both sophomores. A lot of those Nebraska, especially Omaha prep players, have come to Iowa State to play. Another guy out of uh, Millard South, a couple of guys out of Millard South are playing on this team. So good recruiting over in uh, Omaha. Stats on Derek DeGenero. Third down and four for the Cyclones at the 46. They're on. Wants to throw long. Does. Got Ross down there, but overthrew him. That was close. Dennis Ross is their leading receiver. Bruce Pickens was the nearest guy for the Huskers. The left cornerback. And John Custard. Joe, you talk about that state final that's coming up in Class A, which I said that Sports Video Productions is going to televise. That looks like it could be an all-Omaha final. The only team standing in the way of that right now is Lincoln Southeast, and they had to be kind of the underdog going into this. Uh, everybody plays on Monday night, and we'll see next Monday night who the state championship is going, who the state champion is going to be. What a timeout, Iowa State. With 2.42 to go, the Cyclones take a timeout. Well... Today was a day short of being an ideal football day. All over the Channel 3 area, we were thinking, hey, if today was the day, we would not have to brave uh, snow and possible slippery conditions on the highway and the troop uh, over. And this could have been Iowa State's, I think, biggest crowd of the year. They've had 41, 42, 43, and 46,000 for their games up to today. They were thinking 50,000. That's just exactly what Jack Tice Stadium will hold. It was a sellout, Joe. I think they had all the tickets sold. And when we started this ball game, there were probably about 40-some thousand people here. It was almost full. But it didn't take but about uh, 31 Nebraska points to uh, start emptying the stands out and as I mentioned before down into those pubs down into Ames and uh, catch the rest of the broadcast via satellite but uh, as you can see it is almost emptied out now but a few Nebraska fans left uh, both bands and all the cheerleaders are still here so what the heck we'll keep on playing until it's over Iowa State's got Kansas State next week Ready to go now. Fourth down and four. They're going to go for it. Throwing 46. They need four yards. They're going to give up possession. De Janeiro hands it off. Wilkinson runs outside. He needs to get to midfield. And I believe he did. Cyclones will keep the football as he crosses midfield to about the Nebraska 40, what, 48? Yep. <laughs> it is uh, Huskers will go 5-0 and in the conference. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State pending the outcome of that one. The Sooners could be tied with them. Oklahoma State in second place, the only team with only one loss going into today's action. Colorado looks like they're home. To the Iowa State will go 2-3, and three, and Missouri will go 1-4. and four. The two Kansas teams without a victory this year playing each other. Somebody's going to get one unless it's a tie. First and 10, Cyclones. De Janeiro rolls right. Gets chased, throws it. Woo no catch. What that would have been one of the great catches of this day or any other. It's Craig Mahoney up there. And in this weather, if, at that altitude, with his legs being taken out from under him, he'd held onto that one. Get a medal. Here it is. Look at him. Here it is on the replay. And he really goes up. And just at the point of his jump, he gets his feet taken out from under him. And my goodness, right down there. Oh, right on top of his head, Joe. That was really a hit there by Sanders. Marvin Sanders is a junior out of Markham, Illinois, at the safety spot. He's a backup to Tim Jackson. He'll pick up that job next year if he can hold it. With 2.04 to go. 51-10 Nebraska, 31-0 at halftime, Huskers. De Janeiro, long count, goes back to throw, gets chased, gets away for a moment, and finally throws it complete to Nickerson. That's the 40, that's the 35, he's down almost to the 30-yard line. John Custard might have saved the touchdown, the Cyclones second. And that was a pretty good scrambling run by Sylvester Nickerson out of Miami, Florida. There he is, number four. Six foot, 200. 
and seven pounder. Here it is again. Yeah, sit on the replay, Joe, here, and he just gets by a ton of people. He could have fumbled this ball awful easy. He looks like a matador giving up people there and just kind of side armed it, got it downfield, and there, another good run. It's pretty slick out there on the field right now, and he made some awful sharp cuts. First and ten Cyclones at the 30-yard line of Nebraska open field left side. They've got two flankers that way. Pitch goes to the short side, and it's Wilkinson. Not much. Maybe the 29. The See another plastic bag slide back there, yeah, Joe. All over the place. <laughs> I hope, hope there's not a lost child in that plastic bag, Joe. <laughs> oh, this is something. Ray Valado, the Oscars made the stop. Ray was a starting tackle at that uh, left side. That ball game against Texas A&M in the kickoff classic was injured. Never could get the job back. Billy Griffin has picked up the starting assignment most of the year. Second and nine, Cyclones. A little bit of a mix-up. Nickerson starts in motion, goes to the right side. De Janeiro watches him, now runs toward him, now throws toward him, and can't get it. Nickerson, tight roping down the sidelines, tried to cut in. Bruce Pickens was right along beside him. And Joe, that had to be a penalty that the officials didn't call. Of course, you can't have two men in motion at one time. And they had two guys moving there. One guy was moving into, in motion to the sideline, and another guy was resetting. But the officials just didn't choose to call that penalty. Only in Canadian football. And Jim Walden played a couple of years after he got out of Wyoming. He played for British Columbia and for Calgary as quarterback before coming on with the coaching. He was three years at Nebraska as an assistant when the Huskers won their two national titles. Open field, left side. Nickerson goes in motion away from there. De Janeiro has no backs behind him. Gets rice and gets caught. Wait a minute. Flag had already stopped the play. I think they had movement in the line there, Joe. Somebody raised up before the ball was snapped. And that'll go against Iowa State, I'm pretty sure. There's the illegal procedure call against the Cyclones. Here it is. You can see him move just off the left of your screen. And up at the right, too, Joe. Both guys got up. So there probably was a little uh, mistake there by the center who didn't snap it on the proper count, which pulled everybody else off. Oscars were moving, and it looked like the tackle of Iowa State may have jumped up, although he didn't have to. 63 yards and penalties against the Huskers. A little bit more than the Cyclones. 46 seconds only remain on the ball game. On the draw, Nickerson goes to the line of scrimmage, and that was about it. Over the 35, maybe the 34. Quit messing around. Throw this thing into the end zone, Joe. See if the Cyclones want to get one more play away. Dan Savela made the stop. We're 87, and the clock is down to 25 seconds remaining in the ballgame. We'll say a quick so long. Thank you for looking in today. There's the clock showing you the time remaining. De Janeiro with Wilkinson in motion to the open field side. Looks the other way. Throws it on a look-in pass. Iowa State down to the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Cyclones on the last play, and the clock shows one second to go. That's Craig just, Mahoney. That's just terrific, Joe. That's absolutely terrific that they were able to get the ball into the end zone there. Just superb. You'll see it again on the replay here. Just a simple slant in. Boom! Fires the ball. It's right there. A couple of missed tackles, and he dances on into the end zone. That's Dennis, uh, Dennis Ross on the catch there, who uh, was their leading receiver coming in, Joe, and now are they going to go for going to go for two here or are they going to kick it? They're going to go for two. No. <laughs> no. They, <laughs> they, just, they, go out, they put the kicker back and then shift out. But I think if they ever wanted to go for two, it wouldn't be a bad formation, but quarterback holder straightened up. That's Shudak. No good. Or they got... That's the first one he has missed this year and the first one in his career. 51-16. We'll be back in a moment. Ames, Iowa. Nebraska and Iowa State. The Huskers lead it 51-16. Earning a high CD. Cyclones beat the clock by one second. Dennis Ross 
his 29th catch of the year and a touchdown for him. There's the onside kick, and it's all over as soon as the ball touches the ground. Make the final 51-16, and a monumental salute to our sideline guy, Rich Roberts. Rich, final word? Hey, thanks a lot, Joe. Had a lot of fun down here, guys. Uh, happy to be here this afternoon. 51-16, the final. Huskers look good offensively, especially Steve Taylor in their first half played a fine ball game. Defensively, didn't do too bad either. I am cold, but uh, had a good time anyways. Let's go back up to the booth. Here's a touchdown as Taylor in the second half gets the Huskers on the scoreboard again. Cyclones ended it with a De Janeiro to Dennis Ross touchdown with one second to go. 51-16 was the final score. Dan, final word? Well, Joe, two thoughts I have. I think Nebraska has to be extremely proud of this victory. Coming back, scoring 51 points, rolling up a lot of offense, over 650 yards total offense. The other thing has kind of confused me. Walton talked all week long about, you know, Nebraska being outmanned and all of that, or they being outmanned against Nebraska, but he seemed to kind of just go through the motion of this ball game and really didn't open it up. Those are my thoughts, but I think Nebraska really proud. Huskers have Colorado next week at Lincoln. Iowa State will go to Kansas State for their next Big 8 encounter. Today at Ames on a cold, blustery day, Huskers win it after leading 31 to nothing at halftime. They win it 51 to 16. For Dan Livingston, Joe Patrick from Jack Ticefield. That's the final, and we'll see you very hopefully in the near future.